Throughout history, one of the best tactical formations of soldiers at war, and especially in ancient warfare, was the phalanx, and it came in two varieties. You had a shield, or these Macedonian pikemen here, with a pike phalanx. But, you know what? Now that we've got the modern faction in Totally Aggro Battle Simulator, let's try out a riot phalanx formation and see who wins this one. So they've got their big old tactical shields, and they've got their night sticks. And don't worry, we can upgrade these guys to, like, have you ever played, like, Rainbow Six Siege? Whether you get, like, pistols or, like, the old... One of the counter Strikes had guys with pistols and shields, and I, I just want to show that even to this day, the phalanx is used in combat, and here it looks like these guys don't, don't have a freaking chance. So just like Philip of Macedon modernized his soldiers to be able to conquer the Greeks by getting phalanxes of pikemen, we're gonna modernize our phalanx to the ahem, modern faction equivalent, and oh my god, is this a pig man or is this a spider man? So yes, we've equipped our men with pistols and riot shields and look at this, they're able to fire at the incoming pikemen along the way. <laughs> well, modern phalanx versus ancient phalanx, pig man. Who do you think won? So look at this. We've got a lieutenant, a battlefield medic, riot police, the blitz shield, which you just saw, sandbags? Hold on. All right, so I put sandbags in the game, and I put three guys with ARs behind them. Wait, is it- so the sandbags are like, you're able to spawn in a static, defensive, like, building? We're able to spawn in like- this is one of the first mods that I've ever seen where you can spawn in a freaking building. All right, let's see. The she- uh, what? It just deflected- <laughs> hold on. All right, I swear it just looked like it deflected those incoming spears. So we're gonna see with a full volley- oh god, some of those guys- <laughs> Spears to the face. So it blocked some and reflected some and what is going on? I don't know, but sandbags are definitely interesting. So we got sandbags, we got shoddies, Uzis, an assortment of ARs. Some snipers, a minigun, and hold on, a tank. We're familiar with tanks, even in ancient warfare, because while this is a T-90 modern tank, this is a woolly mammoth, and elephants were used as tanks in the ancient world. Oh, that's a one-hit kill from the main gun, but I wonder what the reload rate is. It's, it's gonna be definitely fast enough to deal with all three of these ancient tanks. So we've got a wide assortment of weapons to try out today. A lot of them are extremely expensive. In fact, all of them, except for the sandbags, and the riot police, and the battlefield medic, are over a thousand dollars. So we put out a little squad here. This is the SCAR, which is basically the legendary weapon. Or at least it used to be in old school Fortnite, when I actually still played. Who's still playing Fortnite? And who's honestly onto Minecraft and other beautiful indie games like Totally Aggro Battle Simulator? But this is an M249. It's a LMG or light machine gun. And this thing should have an incredible fire rate. So the scars are reloading and he's still laying down the pain train. <laughs> the, the gun sound effects are pretty good. The, their accuracy isn't the best. Oh my god, but I guess it doesn't have to be. To some degree, look at that. He's reloaded. It took him a little bit longer to reload. Oh, they're still up. They're still up. I love this mod. The, the modern faction. I wonder how Landfall's gonna do it because they could be incredibly powerful. Whoa, there's a secret unit called the Reinforcer. Oh, oh, oh my god, it's like the Summoner. We've got the Summoner here. So he just summoned what? A bunch of random guys. This guy's got some kind of a shoddy, it looks like. This guy's got a, like, a SOCOM sniper. I can't tell what this guy has because he's getting absolutely wrecked. It looks like he had some Uzis. So, the Reinforcer just secretly drops units? So I think this is the boss unit. He's called the Lieutenant. Lieutenant Dan, you don't have any legs. And it just looks like his scar has a scope on it. Oh! Okay, so never mind. We have the, the Lieutenant calls in a squad. <laughs> this guy. This guy. <laughs> that is not how you hold your MG, son. Oh my god. Okay, so they've got a, a field medic, a sniper, and then a rifleman. Yeah. Okay. So the... It wasn't the reinforcer, it was the lieutenant. 
He's the summoner. So this is one of the most precarious maps because there's just so much water. There's a few choke points with these bridges. And I think that this is like the modern faction's like backyard, so to speak. You could use them to hold these bridges with just a few units. So naturally, when any faction invades the dynasty, they're gonna send out their bravest warriors, the samurai, including the child soldiers. My god, isn't- don't they know that's against the Geneva Convention? This is illegal! But look at this. The modern faction has set up sandbags, they're gonna take this land. And, you know what, they're using sharpshooters, so here we have like the Dragunov looking semi-auto. Then we've got AW Ops, AWP Ops from like Counter-Strike. We've got, this is like, what is this thing called again? It's called the Chaytac Intervention. And then we got that SOCOM. So basically what I want to do is see if Samurai can block modern bullets. And if they can, at what rate? Let's see if these guys are blocking shots. It doesn't look like they're able to block shots. Okay, Samurai are not able to stop modern firearms. Oh god, you're, you're firing at the wrong group. So the machine gunners, and wait, something's slowing this down. Whenever this guy shoots, it goes like Matrix-style bullet time. Oh my god, these poor dudes! You need a couple, like, riot police up here. Uh-oh. This guy is about to get cut down by katanas. Although he's taking a lot of samurai with him. What is happening? How come that guy's not dead yet? Okay, there he is. He, he's going. He's actually fighting again. Nope, he fought the current as bravely as he could for a brief moment. Okay, so... I think it's clear. Is this guy even wearing a shirt? This is the opper, and I don't know who he's shooting at or what, but... Wait, this guy's still alive. What are you doing? Hold on, let's let's take control of him. I wish you could, like... All right, this is super fast. Reload. But it doesn't do a ton of damage. Look at this, I'm getting, like... I'm getting shots. I'm getting hits. Hmm. Unless the samurai are blocking these, or they're just incredibly weak. Well, there we go! I'm, like, having to lead my shots, which is very strange with a sniper. But imagine if you could, like, scope up your rifle in this game. These guys should still win. I don't- Oh, they're stuck over there because there's a dude. Alright, well, we need to revise our tactics. So that was an interesting idea. I really want to try this shoddy unit, so let's put him out and let's see what he does. One of the other things I did was change up, instead of sandbags, we're going to the old, uh, phalanx formation. This time we've got the blitzers, which have these really cool looking shields, and these little pistols here. And this guy's got a shoddy, so let's just see how good he is. Alright, sir, you may fire when ready. Wait a minute! He just shoots, but this- okay. I was worried about how the shotgun would work in this. He fires, but you can tell that it's just kind of like, it goes in a spread, and it's and it's very possible to miss. It's not necessarily going to hit, so that's pretty amazing. And I love these guys with the shields. I really want to try them against, like, some projectile units, like archers or something. I think that's what we're going to give them a try next. But this is kind of like going to show us what the modern faction could look like, or will look like. Look at the shotgun guy. Every time he shoots, it pushes him back. I think, don't, you better not step into that water, Bill. Look at that. <laughs> Oh no, he's probably gonna shoot. <laughs> this reminds me of the old school stick fight game where like, when you use the shotgun, you can like, fly yourself off the map. Okay, so the modern faction is pretty impressive. They've got a lot of uh, really interesting units. Samurai guy, are, have you dislocated your shoulders again? Or are you just holding it well above your head, like, to try to intimidate the enemy? But there are ninjas out here right now, and without any shield guys, Whoa, 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 whoa! That's inappropriate there, Samurai Joe! Or is it Samurai Jack? Oh, man. Come on, dude. Oh! <laughs> Look, now that his rifle's up there, he's probably not gonna be able to get a shot in. So these monk staffers, it's like they're staffers. Oh! Did you see that? This bullet just went bullet time, and that was fired by... Dude, the bullet is fantastic. Oh, that was fired by... Was it... This guy! So when he shoots, it, it goes bullet time. It just hasn't for a while, I don't know, maybe he's been distracted or something? Oh, that guy got taken out by an op. Look at this guy. Hey, dude! <laughs> that was actually kind of perfect. He just shot. There must have been a guy that was, like, still alive in this mound. So to have a better appreciation for the riot gear soldiers, we're gonna need to put them against an army that's gonna fire a lot of projectiles here. So here comes... A volley of spears. Now, oh, they deflect, but 
so they deflect instead of just sit there and absorb the shots, which actually allows other spears to get in. So I don't know if that's like the best thing to do. Now we're going to see what these shields do, if they do them differently or if it's going to be the same mechanic where they block. Let's see. Yeah, they block. And look at that. If there's more spears coming in, a few of them may find their mark, like uh, that one's in his spinal column, and I don't think he's going to be sitting very pretty for a while. <laughs> Look at how they're holding their gun. This guy's got a spear in his hand, and now he can't lift his pistol to shoot, so it's looking like he's about to shoot himself in the leg. This is absurd, and I love it. Okay. So while they can deflect, I, I, I think I'd rather guys that just didn't and just absorb it. That would be true phalanx. Hey, dude. Have you heard of a grenade that's rocket propelled? Welcome to the RPG. Hold on, where did it go? Where is the RPG? He just fired it. Oh my god, it did. It's it's super fast. What? Well, we clearly need to see that. Okay. We're in slow motion now to see the our rocket propelled grenade. There it is. Oh my god, it's beautiful. It even looks like a Soviet RPG round. Immediate detonation, so it seems like they're not totally accurate. Haha, <laughs> like the game. Alright, so round three, let's see if this one misses or it's a direct hit because the other one went behind them. Oh, yeah, I think right now their balance could, they could be balanced. Oh, grenade launcher. Oh, hey guys. How about if I launch a grenade? How many freaking types of grenades does the modern faction have? It looks like three and it's incredible. I want to see that again. All right, so how fast does it come out? It should come out arced and not very fast. That looks like a freaking bullet. <laughs> it's like a 40 millimeter grenade round as opposed to like a proper grenade being launched. Did you guys ever play Counter-Strike? And you know that the, the most powerful pistol is the Deagle? Because it's a 50 caliber round. Look at this. <laughs> the Deagle versus a bunch of poor... Savages from the ancient days. Well, let's see how one guy with twin dual wielding deagles deals with a Viking onslaught here. It's a Viking Blitzkrieg. Um, and honestly, these deagle rounds are just too powerful, man. Ooh, the Jarl actually, okay, the Jarl's taken two hits. Each of them has taken three hits now. Four, five, six. Miss, 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 miss. Oh, when they get close, he starts to get a little distracted. Okay, so the Jarls are pretty good at dealing with 50 caliber rounds. Look at this. Now, I'm curious to see if a unit can climb this ladder. Because if that's true, it's amazing. Because what we have on our hands today is a Hobbit prison break. Oh, yes. I figured with the guard tower, it would look kind of like a prison. We've got riot shields and we've got these guys with shotguns. So let's see how this works. The guys in the tower have deagles. They're doing pretty good. We got two shotguns and three riot shields, but we've got so many hobbits escaping from the prisons of Isengard that it's just like... I don't know if these riot guys are gonna be able to handle it. The shotgun guys are hilarious because it reminds me of stick fight. How when they fire, they get pushed back. Come on, boys. Come on. <laughs> but the hobbits don't have enough, man. Okay. The hobbits need some armor of their own, don't they? All right, here we go. We're gonna spice up the attack on the prison guard tower. We're gonna give these guys a little bit of armor. Oh, the shotgun is still able to go through hay. I mean, who would have thought it? Now, we've also got some wheelbarrows to hopefully distract these shotgun guys. I love how these guys in the tower are still just, like, wrecking right now. Oh, it's funny, though. It, it, look at that. When they get to a certain distance away, the guys just immediately start to be a little more inaccurate. And everybody who is on the bottom is now defeated, except for this one man. Oh my god! Whoa! He was about to get taken down by the shotgun instead! Okay, so it, it doesn't look like they are very good at dealing with towers. Hmm, you know what we need? Siege equipment. Do you think the Romans were like, Hey man, the barbarians are at the gates. Look at us in this beautiful guard tower. Oh my god, they've got catapults! I kind of want to see what it's like to see the siege from up here. It's like a totally different perspective! A totally accurate perspective. Look at the nightstick flying in the air. We've got all amounts of shrapnel flying everywhere, but I'm really curious. You know what? Hold on. You may fire when ready. We will siege that tower, sir. Fire! Oh, I hit the tower. I think I gotta aim higher. Just a little higher, as Lando would say. All right, I fired up a little higher, and it looked like we got a direct hit on one of the guys. 
Oh, he's about to fall out of the tower. This guy's trying to get out, but he cannot. We gotta build castles, man. So look at this. We've got buildings, maps, and we've got the 20 to 21st century. There are so many units in this one. A nuclear barrel and an explosive barrel? Barrier with spikes? All right, this kind of looked like medieval palisade as it's made out of wood. We just need to change the colors of it. Look at this. And they're firing their arrows from behind it. Now I'm curious to see if these spikes actually do a good job at stopping the incoming swordsmen or if they hurt them. They're kind of working a little bit. I think the archers have a much better chance at winning. Otherwise they would have been immediately overrun. Now, the knights are getting through in some places, so if you doubled or tripled up these walls, it would probably work. You know what I want to try? Semi-automatic crossbows. Let's see how the Chuko Nu do. Oh, dude, look at this. It's like, it's like a machine gun fire, but instead of bullets, they're just Chuko Nu crossbow bolts. Now, the only unfortunate thing is they back up like this. So they're probably gonna do a much better job, but look at how most of them get stuck on the barricades as they are intended to do. The Chuko Nu should be able to win this one handily, and I think they are. Now let's see how the modern faction does. What is this? It's called a military tent. Look at this. Okay, so I've put four tents in here, and I'm not entirely sure why. I have a suspicion that they might be spawners, but I don't know for sure. So we put the three best snipers up in this second version of a guard tower, which is pretty impressive. Look at this. Oh, hello! The Spartans are at the gates, gentlemen. You may... Uh, let's let's shoot at them. Oh, these poor Spartans. And remember that the Chainac intervention guy, he kind of slows it down. Oh my gosh! Whoa, 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 whoa! Where did all these guys come from? Oh my god, they do spawn. This guy's a minigunner. It just spawns in random dudes from that faction. We don't know which ones. This guy's got the legendary scar. We've got miniguns that made him look like he's in power armor from Fallout. We need a Fallout mod, I know. All right, so then let's get rid of uh, one, uh, one, all of the tents, but one is the words that are supposed to be coming out my mouth. All right, boys. Uh oh, military faction just spawned in an entire army. Uh, it seems like they mostly have ARs. Where did this guy just come from? He spawned way far away from the tent. Oh, he's got an arrow in his shin armor. Yeah, I'm sorry, but the, the armies of the ancient world simply do not have enough to deal with a, a, a military spawner. So this is gonna be interesting. I themed it as a local militia. Oh my god. These poor snipers have no chance. So basically, we've got guys with Uzis, guys with Kalashnikovs, and then we've got rocket propelled grenades here. Look at this, boys. These snipers in the tower, let's, we're in real time, right? Well, in slow motion, rather. Oh, <laughs> yes! <laughs> they're still shooting at them when they're in the air. Oh my God, it's glorious. All right, this guard tower needs a lot more soldiers on it, doesn't it? Even the guys in the military tent, I think, are just getting absolutely wrecked. The RPG rounds are coming in. We're gonna need to set up a few more defenses. We're gonna make a proper military base. So the military tent costs $20,000, and I can see why now, if it spawns in units. Ah, ancient Greece. The site of Mount Olympus. Ancient temples of amazing historical value and insight. And also the site of the modern day's biggest clash. The Red Militia versus the Blue Legion. Oh my god, look at this guy. He's like, I don't need no sandbags. My name is Sergeant Rocket Johnson. Wait, isn't that like the name of Rock? The Rock? The Rock? Oh my god. Iraq? <laughs> this is absolutely crazy. They've got guard towers. The amount of fire coming out of this. Look at this. They've got sandbags. They've got those big giant sandbags. They've got these mounted defenses. Jimmy! They're throwing their AKs at us! Why are they doing that? I don't know, man. I don't even know why I'm not firing right now. Never mind. I just loaded up my SKR. I think it's pronounced Scar, you idiot. Ah, uh, Durka, Durka, Durka. Well, <laughs> this is absolute chaos, and there is a military tent back here. So we've got a crazy amount. Oh, good lord. You know what I'm thinking? They also added flamethrowers. We gotta check those out. So these military bases are incredible. I guess we could also do these in a medieval sense if someone were to use like a... Like these palaces would work well in medieval. These towers kind of look a little too modern, you know? 
What is that noise? What is this going on? <laughs> Excuse me, sir. That's not exactly how it's done. All right, yeah. Flamethrower, $2,500. Let's see just how good he is. Yeah, that looks like an endless line of guys. Hold on, excuse me, sir. How did you get there, and how are you doing that? We found the new god, and is that a lunar eclipse? Not a lunar eclipse, just the moon? All right. Flamethrower versus endless line of men. It doesn't look like he's having any problem dispatching these guys if they're lined up. I'm kind of curious if we put them in a giant line that's perpendicular to him. I guess they're facing him instead of like, you know, lining up just to basically get torched. I wonder if he can- look at this. And look at his helmet, man. It looks kind of like more like Fallout style power armor, but it looks like he's got like a fighter pilot mask on. It's very interesting. And then like a bicycle helmet? Yeah, very intriguing. He had no problem torching all of them. Alright, now we're gonna make a concave, uh, circle- uh, semicircle here. And see how good he is at lateral movement. Look at this, he's gonna be going crazy! He's- he's- dude, flamethrowers are the best! Now, how do you counter a flamethrower? Oh, I don't know. Increase, uh, the amount of ranged opponents. Uh, these ones throw spears. Let's see how many spears his power armor can take. I don't know, man. This really reminds me of Fallout more than it reminds me of, like, a modern faction in terms of the weapon. Here come the spears. It was about this moment he realized. Oh! <laughs> right in his head, he's still going, though. Okay, some of the spears are missing. There's a third one. He's taken three spears. Wow, those spear throwers are very inaccurate. I wouldn't even call them totally accurate. Oh my god, another one to the face! Oh! He explodes! Oh. That's a lot of guys in power armor with flamethrowers. Oh. They're gonna be fighting the tents that spawn in tons of units. Let's see- Oh! <laughs> I love how the flamethrower guys explode. Oh my gosh, you know what would be fun is, there, I don't know if there was ever a unit like it. No, there was, the barrel rollers. You remember those guys? I'd love to have like a nostalgia unit secret that you have to like do a campaign that's like all the old levels and you can unlock all the old units. Like, my God, that would be fun. Remember the poacher, the barrel roller, all of the neon faction. There's so many units that haven't made it from the older version. So not too long ago, we previewed the modern faction. We covered them when they first came out a few months ago, but since then, a lot has changed. Their uniforms are getting better. They're even getting combat goggles, and I'm just not entirely sure how they're able to see out of them. But they're equipped with some pretty impressive firepower. And they're gonna need it because, yes, beating up on the uh, tribal faction is pretty easy, especially when you're firing bullets down range. Like, look at this. Look at these things. They're beautifully modeled bullets. And if we stand here, we can just see what's going on. And while in the last episode, we had this kind of like zombieism mod where once you died, you would turn into a zombie, you would be reborn and turn to a skeleton faction. Now we actually have a proper zombie faction. So we are gonna be seeing the zombies versus the modern faction. And obviously this is gonna be a zombie siege. Oh my God, did you see that? The guy with the twin Uzis was actually juggling this dude. Let's see that in replay, because that was pretty impressive. He was juggling him with Uzi 9mm. And when you look at the zombie faction, you can see that we've got a, an incredible amount. We have everything from small zombies, running zombies, crawling zombies, flying zombies? I gotta see what this looks like. Oh my god, it's like Valentine's Day has passed, but whoever the evil cousin of the Cupid is, I think this is it. Chargers, Seekers, oh my gosh. So basically what we're gonna be doing today is we're gonna be building a fort and whenever the humans win, the zombies go up a tier. Whenever the zombies win, the humans get another unit and can increase their fort size. After a few rounds, we'll switch maps, but this is gonna be kind of like a mini game how I would imagine like just kind of a progressional zombie siege mini mode would go. But eventually we're gonna get up to things called like Mutated tank chargers, jumping spitters, flying psycho... What is this? Cytokinesis? I don't even know what that is. Giant zombies? Oh my god, this thing. Oh my god. Okay, so first wave for zombies seems pretty easy enough. Let's see how our human defenders do. So look at that. The zombies 
aren't immediately killed. I guess you've got to, what, hit them in the head? Wouldn't it be cool if there was actually a proper... Okay, that appears to be in order. We could use the old classic barrier with Spike seems to do pretty well. Now, I wonder with the pathfinding update that should be coming soon to Totally Hacker Battle Simulator, that eventually the AI is going to get even smarter. But as you can see, oh my god, I was going to say, it looks like the, oh, the humans run from the zombies. And he's turning colors. Hold the phone. Do you think we got we to gotta test this out real quick? So these guys survive, Uzis and FN Scar. But what happens if we put a bunch of these guys in? Will they convert to zombies? Because you can see them like, it's like their blood is getting drained out of them as the zombies seem to be clawing, scratching, and biting. I wanna see if one of these guys die, he's now fully colored green. Now he fell over, they turn green. Oh my God, and he gets up. Oh God, that's pretty terrifying. Okay. So that's exciting. We This is an even better zombie mod than we saw. Now the zombification is done by Fern and the modernization mod is done by Hodaka Morishima. Now what I'm gonna get better at is putting the mods in the video description below. So if I forget that, just remind me and you know, if not, I can always tweet it out. Just follow me on the Twitters. All right, so we're gonna put the Uzi and the Scar back and the zombies just lost, right? So we have small zombies and zombies. So let's switch these to four zombies. Okay, that makes a whole lot of sense. So big zombies are a little bit better at getting through the fence. They're scaring them. Oh, if he converts him, oh man, he's biting them all over. But he's getting shot in the back by the scar. Oh, he, uh-oh. All right, so I'm thinking, now that that guy's dead, he's gonna rise from the dead, but he didn't do it soon enough. And the human survived. So let's go to get... We'll put two running zombies. And the running guys look like they're about two to three times as fast, maybe? They're breaking through the gate. Oh yeah, this is not looking good for the human resistance, man. One guy's going down and he's got the heavy weaponry. The FN Scar should have pretty decent range. So as they're both going down, I think it's safe to say that the zombies won. It says blue victory, but we know it is the undead victory. What is dead may never die. Always seems to like, I don't know, whenever I hear zombies, I think of that quote. All right, so in order to defeat these zombies, I'm thinking what we want to do is put some Hesco barriers up on the sides. What's a ruin? Oh, that's cool. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like I can delete it. I don't know where it is on the XYZ plane because I'm thinking what we want to do is add a battlefield medic and then I want to put a P90 over here on the flank. I'm, if he fires between that, which is my hope, it's kind of gonna act as a little bit of a pillbox, but I guess his firing angle is a little bit decreased here. Yep, he is not the good spot to put it. It looks like he's got stuck in the Hesco barrier, but the medic might be able, even though it looks like all three of these guys are dancing, I can promise you, it looks like the medic is actually being bitten while he's healing the double Uzis. Oh my gosh. Yeah, needless to say, where we put the P90 was not a very good spot. Oh, this guy's getting brutally savaged by teeth and claws alike. But they might just have enough firepower until the enemies start rising from the dead. Which is a problem with the zombie virus. Depending on the lore of the zombies that you use. And another one joins and he just gets in there right at the time. Looks like they're giving each other a little bit of a Valentine's Day kiss, but we know it was death. All right, so we're gonna reposition that P90. I'm thinking what we do actually, since the humans lost, uh, to me, it seems that the barrier with spikes often works the best. I'm gonna put the P90 here on the front line, and I'm gonna put the scar in the back. Now I can add another unit, and I'm thinking what we want is let's go with let's go with the shotgun. A shotgun on the front line should be pretty good. And it, you think about this: this is how powerful the zombie faction is, because there's only what six total units, two of which have running abilities. Come on, shoddy boy. I wonder how accurate the shotgun is. He, he doesn't seem to be the most accurate. Oh, the poor medic is getting eaten alive right here. Somebody shoot that thing. The shotgunner guy might not be the best either. I mean, honestly, we all knew it would happen. We just didn't know when. Was this 3D modeled by a few children? Kindergartner with construction paper? This is 
This is weird. Level one column design. <laughs> level 100. We all knew it would happen, though. Zeus was the first to kind of get an idea that it was happening. So he gathered all the leaders from the other factions and brought them together. And even though the Monkey King decided, hey, it might be fun to hit the king in the nuts and there's a crow attacking him. I don't know. I guess nobody likes the king. But they were all gathered. The leaders. Wait. You're not a leader, but I guess you are smaller than a siege tank. That the modern faction was invading and looking to take over all of the other factions through sheer force. And guess what they brought? Not a very strangely positioned minigun. I mean, it is all about size, isn't it? But they brought in the power of artificial intelligence, or I guess remote-controlled heavy weapons of mass destruction. Drones. I mean, next we'll be fighting off Terminators. Oh yeah. But the Air Force has working ballistic missiles that can be fired from the air. They brought the Air Forces. Interestingly enough, the modern faction scouting party consisted of a bunch of dudes with shields. Some of which were armed with, you know, semi-automatic firearms and others just big old sticks because, you know what, I guess it's just history that teaches us the man with the bigger stick or minigun, I guess, as we saw earlier. That's a big stick. Has a good chance. But remember, to invade all of the Tabs factions, you're first gonna have to start with the Ancient faction. And it looks like shields and sticks is the way of the war and, you know, what? not much has changed except for the fact that we may hold our firearms <laughs> above our head. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it is... <laughs> that is an interesting way to do it, but remember, shields are really good, especially when your enemies are armed with throwing spears and giant rocks. So, let's go ahead and... Oh man, giant rocks are pretty good at defeating dudes with shields. Who would have thought that the physical impact of a giant rock would knock somebody over. So while boulder throwers seem to be the most effective unit at stopping the modern faction, at least at this moment, uh, they also have body armor, which can help protect them. Like, look at this. This guy's got a shield in what should have been a pretty critical spot to kill him and knock him out of the battle, but here he stands. So the scouting party of the modern faction is running through the ancients. Wait till you see... <laughs> oh, okay, carry him by the leg, why don't you? Wait till you see the number of crazy units that we have. So while it looked like, what is this man doing? Is he doing the Macarena or something? Like, oh man, he's pooping. Okay. The modern faction has a ton of units you can see here, from battlefield medics, all the way up to snipers, flamethrowers, miniguns, drones, and even air force vehicles. But the tribal leader, the bone mage, just decided to bring in a little super weapon of his own, the tank of the ancient world. The Wuhuli Mammoth. I believe that's how you pronounce it. He's got dudes that may have broken their neck, but they still decided to fight, and the modern faction decided to change things up. Reach out and touch someone. How about with some fully automatic firepower firing 5.56, five, and I don't know what this one fires, but it's big and it's dangerous looking. So let's go ahead and see how the modern faction can deal with this. Oh my god. So these guys' shields. <laughs> oh, he just got hit in the nuts with a giant rock. That's gotta hurt. Guess he doesn't care though, he's back up. Oh, okay. He does care, because he's dead. <laughs> what just happened? Okay, the Bone Mage is out here. He's doing a pretty good job fighting this. But remember, if you anger the modern faction, I don't know, by like spearing them in the head, they're gonna retaliate, man. They've got an assortment of weaponry, but nothing seems to scare giant animals more than explosives. And always remember that grenades come in at least a few varieties, one of which is hand thrown, and the other is tube launched out of this amazing looking grenade launcher. And look at this man's armor. I don't know why, but his head with the helmet like that reminds me of that game Worms. Did you guys ever play Worms? Anyway, let's see if these explosives are what is what it's going to take. Hold on. Oh, dude, so that's a 40 millimeter grenade round that was fired at pretty high speed out of there. You can even see some of these bullets, which what I love about this mod is the bullets are actually bullets, not little musket balls. Like, look at that. That looks, whoa, like a freaking bullet. Okay, so that's a grenade round going off right in front of the Bone Mage's face. Oh, dude, he just got so lucky. He just pulled the Matrix right here, I think and dodged another 40 millimeter grenade round. These things are being fired all oh, bone mage. Rest in pepperonis. And by rest in pepperonis, I mean, I guess you're not, it's not bedtime yet. But I do want a pepperoni pizza now that I'm thinking about it out loud. 
This guy is the Blitz Shield unit, and he's got this incredible ability. He, like, deflects incoming projectiles. I don't know what that's all about. Is this thing, like, kind of like, you know, reactive armor where it'll explode or something like that? So let's see how good the Mammoth is doing now that we've got explosives. Is he... <laughs> I guess, I guess the, the Mammoth is dead, but this guy is gonna have to face multiple enemies, and those rocks are really, really effective. Yeah, doing just like that. Knocking this guy down. Hold on. Wait, what if, what if I take command? Oh, wrong button! Wrong button! If I take command, bad things happen. Oh! So I was a little bit wrong. Grenades come at least in three varieties. Oh my god, he's a spider face. Hand thrown, launched, in the rocket propelled variety. So we've got the RPG, we've got the shields. Basically, the modern faction was like, you know what, if they're gonna line up in phalanx formation with shields up front, we're gonna do it too. And we're also gonna kill our own men because we're idiots. And friendly fire is clearly a thing in war, it just seems to be more of a problem for the modern faction than anybody else. I don't entirely know why, but it is, so we didn't really even see the uh, RPG in action. It's, he's, he's dead. He, he blew himself up, and look at that. Grenades bouncing off of a mammoth. I, I mean, he's not called a tank for nothing, right? But he will eventually succumb to just, oh, burning things. Burning up his wool. It'd be kind of cool <laughs> these guys are throwing directly at him. Okay, ancient faction is conquered. But some of the modern faction's firepower can fire so many rounds. This is a box-fed light machine gun. These guys got twin Uzis. And just in case when you're like, hey, maybe they have armor that doesn't look like it should block bullets, but it might? You know, because the farmer faction decided to hold the bridge at all costs with, you know, artillery and cavalry support over here. They've got their leader, the Scarecrow, back there. An entire legion of the furriest footed hobbits. But all of those things look flammable. And this is a flamethrower unit. Uh, that is the weirdest helmet I think I've ever seen. I don't know what's going on there. I don't want to know what's going on there. But these hobbits ain't want none of this flames, I'll tell you that. The potion sellers are making everybody dizzy. So we got bullets flying all over the place. I need to turn the volume down because I'm going deaf listening to the firepower. I don't I'm not sure if... Look at this. I'm kind of... <laughs> I love when these guys get a little bit like, you know, dizzy and their Uzi's just like, what are you, what are you doing, man? <laughs> just watching this guy alone is just pure entertainment. The flamethrower guy doesn't look like he can be stopped. Maybe the gas mask is keeping him from being affected. Apples don't seem to do much other than slightly annoy him. And then all of the cavalry seems to have gotten distracted over here in the hayfields, which, by the way, is flammable. So the farmer faction didn't seem like it put on a very good show. So they're going to have a second crack at it, this time bringing in... Oh my god, this is like the Rohirrim from Rohan. You know, the, where's Gandalf? Where's... Where is Gandalf? The issue here, though, is that the modern faction has the most advanced weapons of war. So they can simply adapt. You want firepower? How about three miniguns? Okay, they're all firing at the ground. <laughs> so this is not at all as we intended it. You can see bullets flying in all directions. Eventually, they're gonna hit somebody. You know? Like, look at this guy. Who, who seems to just be, like, dragging his wheelbarrow and trying to, like, headbutt some of his own teammates. I don't know, maybe he's hopped up on fruit roll-ups and schnapps or something. I don't, I don't know what derpy looking farmers eat and drink while at work. So while the miniguns might not be effective, I'm fairly certain that these RPGs are gonna be because we're about, what, a fraction of a second from impact and BOOM! There goes half of the cavalry force. The problem is now everyone's getting wrecked with apples and they actually managed to hold off the heavy ballistics team from the modern faction. How will the modern faction respond? Well, with some dudes with shields and skirts and then a bunch of snipers in the back here. Look at this. So, I'm I'm kind of curious how far they can fire. Their range seems to be the entirety of the map. These guys are supposed to distract them and these guys are supposed to be shooting a lot faster, but I guess they are snipers, so they're gonna lure the enemy into driving off the cliff. The problem is, most of them are gonna get swept up with the wheelbarrows. Oh my god. Oh! Imagine 
Having one of the coolest weapons and getting knocked out by a couple of happily boys. <laughs> I think the problem was we put the snipers in the wrong spot. Snipers are always supposed to go in trees, right? So I'm gonna take command of one of these guys and just fire arbitrarily into the blue masses because what we brought today was a line of shields, most of which have gotten knocked over, and then dudes with M249s, which have an incredible rate of fire and can put down a lot of lead down range. So most of these guys should be taken out, and you know who's next after the farmer faction is the medieval faction. What are you doing? Did you... Did he shoot himself? So normally you want to bring a gun, right? Well, if you don't have guns, quantity has a quality all of its own. Joseph Stalin apparently said that, allegedly. And this looks like a pretty big army by the medieval faction, but what if... What if you got something called a little walkie-talkie, you know, and then a little, a little side piece, like... What, what could you do? Could you, I don't know, call in artillery strikes? Yes, you could! <laughs> and everybody's dead, though. <laughs> well, I guess one of the things you can do is build concrete walls. That should prove a little bit difficult for some of these arrows to find their marks. Oh, hide behind cover! Dude, someone, where's the artillery? They're gonna, where are they? I gotta take command here. Oh my god, they're, they're derping out on the wall. Get out of here! I need a reload, Charlie! Call in the artillery! Our Charlie, call in the- Ar Ch Ch Charlie put his handgun over the wall. <laughs> Alright, artillery strike may not be as awesome as I thought it was. He cost $10,000, so let's just put in a couple more of them. Alright, call in all of the artillery, will you please? Oh! Sons of biscuits, man! The archer's back there! I don't want to be an archer. I want to be... A cool guy. Oh, I got an arrow on my neck, dude! Why? The modern faction is having a little bit of an issue. Y'all ask for it, okay? I, I mean, the modern faction is sick of having to be held back. Oh, yes. Flames and ragdoll physics. Oh, sir, you better watch out, because everyone just got headshotted perfectly? Oh, my God! That guy just got hit in the kidney! But those three dudes got straight up headshotted. So, there we go. That's a little bit better. Step one for victory. Bring more firepower than the other guys. But one of the things I want to try out is this drone, right? So the drone is way up here. I don't even know how it can get shot. And, oh god, he just fired... Oh, is this a Hellfire missile? Wait, that sounded like a sec... Oh my gosh. What can... Look, they're just standing in place because they don't know what to do. Oh, after two shots... It dies. Okay, so let's put in a couple snipers in the trees back here, some spec ops guys, maybe with some laser sights calling in the drone strike, because generally drones need a target so they can use their cameras, but oftentimes they're, you know, coordinated with forces on the ground, right? So, so he's flying around all derpy-like. I don't think he's got any more missiles left, so now it's just up to these snipers to take out the archers, but remember, these archers, are pretty freaking accurate, man. I guess they were trained by Robin Hood himself. And you can hear the bullets just bouncing off of these stone walls. So, there are only two survived. The rest were taken out by arrows and rather questionable targets. But, uh, ultimately, these look pretty good. And while they kind of look like those dark guns in, like, Jurassic World that they used to shoot the pterodactyls with, I guess they could take out these guys as well. I think it's time we try out these battlefield medics, which... They've got an inverted Swiss flag on their boxes, so maybe these things are laden with chocolates, which should increase morale, give the soldiers a sugar rush, and maybe, just maybe help them be a little bit more accurate. So we've got 40 millimeter grenade launchers. The Viking faction decided to come out in their traditional shield wall, and oh look, it's a frozen lake. Let's bring in our navy, right? It's, it's the Viking way, the totally accurate Viking way. So shield walls versus shield walls. P90s, which everyone knows are OP if you've ever played a first-person shooter. Friendly fire by the modern faction, because why the heck not? It just seems like a good idea at the time. <laughs> and, you know what? The medics, where are those medics? Shotgunners, which are spo <laughs> Which are supposed to be <laughs> on the front of the- you know, that's not how you shotgun. Oh, wait a second. They're dishing out the chocolates to each other. They kept each other alive. And they kept friendship strong. Which I guess is the ultimate goal, right? But what about this guy? He's called the Lieutenant. If he does what I think he does... Let's see, so... What's the Lieutenant armed with? It looks like he's got a FN Scar, 
which FN isn't that Fabrique Nationale, isn't that like a Belgian company? He's got a little dot sight. He's got some pretty good guns, but I think the lieutenant's an officer, right? So he's gonna call in some soldiers! Re- random reinforcements, he's got an M249, one of these crazy snipers. Who is this dude? A minigunner. Just popped up out of nowhere. Sir, so that's- okay, he was reloading. Oh my god! Okay, so he called in his squad, but unfortunately, I'm not sure- Whoa. Oh yeah, minigunner's special, right? So what if I take- What if I take control of this guy? Hey, 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 chill out, chill out. I think that's me. I'm about to fall off the cliff, but if I played stick fight enough, I know that you can use... Ah! You can use it as like a jetpack, right? I can barely aim it, but I can still aim it a little bit. Oh my God, and the medic is keeping me alive. Hold on, medic! Sorry, medic, I gotta use it as a jetpack. All right, I'm reloading. I'm gonna get a little bit closer. I'm dragging my gun like a noob. There's a little bit of friendly fire. Hey, medic, and let's fire. Where are my bullets? It's really hard to see. We need like tracer rounds on this. What is happening? Do I have infinite health? Well, I guess I do because of the, oh my God, he's frozen. I wish you could jump. This game needs like tab G or tab Z first person or like control. There we go. Where am I firing? Okay, kind of up. Still very much up. All right, I'm, I'm starting to die now. Is that guy not dead? Where am I shooting? <laughs> but one of my favorite things is amphibious invasions, specifically the battles in the Pacific and D-Day in the Atlantic of World War II, where America became a two-time World War champ. So did England, and technically so did France. But Americans were quite boisterous about it. But in order to have these D-Days, well, we're gonna have to have a World War II faction. So we've gotta create our units and like, check this out. By adding all of the weapons from Totally Accurate Battlegrounds or Tab G, the Battle Royale game. Look at this, we've got a Browning automatic rifle. Look at this thing. It's got some, are those? Oh, that's the bipod on the top of it. It's got a 20 round magazine. This thing lays down the pain. And so that is gonna be the first weapon we're gonna be working with. Now, as far as clothes, well, we've gotta find ourselves, well, excuse me. <laughs> we are not gonna be the Ottomans. This is in Constantinople. Luckily for us, there is this ahem, World War section here. So we got gas masks, we've got the German helmet, we've got these little lieutenant hats, we got goggles. And the cool thing is we can change the color if we want. Oh, look at this helmet. This is kind of Vietnam era looking to me, but it could also work here. He's got like an ace of spades and some bullets in his helmet. So now we gotta work on the uniform. The flak jacket, it does look a little too Vietnam era, doesn't it? And we need a standard uniform, but I'm thinking what we're gonna have to do here is change the color to a more green. How about what color matches that helmet? Here we go, GI. Now he's, he's gonna need some pants. So you need some pants that isn't uniform. Look at that, it's looking nice. And then definitely some combat boots. We don't want <laughs> Roman shoes. There we go. And look at that. This is pretty great. Now let's see, is there anything else we wanna add? Arms is normally just greaves and stuff. There's not too much other than that. We could add some facial hair if we want, but you know what, these GIs are well manicured. And as far as their stats, well, I'm thinking attack speed would go up because he's got an automatic weapon here. And it's a 30-06 round, so we're gonna up the damage as well. And he's gonna be named USA Bar for Browning Automatic Rifle. And that's a pretty good image right there. You can see that it's a BAR. Unit cost, 150. American Ingenuity. Now we're gonna need a new faction. This is American Olive Green GI <laughs> standard issue. Now for the icon, do we have any weapons? Or anything that says, hey, we're gonna be giving them the freedom. USA. All right, so we've got our first unit here and it's the BAR, we're gonna need a few more. So what if we, can we edit an existing unit? Now obviously we're gonna need a Lieutenant's M1A1 Thompson submachine gun with this little 30 round stick mag. And we're gonna need a new helmet. Now, Lieutenant, he, he doesn't use a chin strap. He uses his university education 
to guide him through battle. So we're gonna go to our greens here, and where is our beautiful olive green? There it is. Now, unfortunately, our only real options here, you know, we could add, uh, he could hold pistols if he wanted. <laughs> or, you know, it's some bongo drums to keep his soldiers in line, but I, I don't think that's appropriate either. You know what, let's give him some grenades. Uh, <laughs> USA Lieutenant Dan. Now his statistics, we're gonna down the damage, but up the attack speed. And we're gonna increase his hit points cause he is a enlisted officer. Now we're gonna need some grunts. So we got ourselves uh, the basic uniform that we've been rocking. Now, since he's a grunt, he's gonna have to carry everything on his back. And as far as the weapon's concerned, I think there's an M1 Garand in here. Oh, dude. An M1911 for like a colonel or something would be really cool. Oh, and we've got a Luga. There it is, the Garand. All right, so we're gonna make this a two-handed rifle because that seems to be appropriate. And as far as your stats, well, you're the basic unit out here. So we're gonna drop you down to 50 hit points. Attack speed is gonna be standard because you've got a semi-automatic rifle. And now we're just gonna add you to USA Faction. Now, I'd really love to have vehicles in here, but the unit creator is not at that level just yet. Now we need to lay down some heavy suppressing fire. Do we have any machine guns in here? There's mini guns. Ah, the M2 Browning. <laughs> Look at this thing. It's got a box mag for its belt fed 50 caliber machine gun rounds right on the side there. This thing is going to be some serious. Now, this thing's definitely a two hander. And now this guy's definitely going to have to be carrying extra rounds on him. Look at that. I, I want to add another one. Can I do another one? Like another round of machine guns on the other side? No, they stack. And this is really where it's gonna make the difference. So he's gonna have 100 hit points, but his attack speed is gonna be 5.00. And the damage, this thing hits like a mule, so we're gonna do 2x. And his cost is gonna be a little more expensive than the rest of them. But I kinda wanna see this guy in action, so let's go ahead and uh, just test him out real quick. Uh, I don't know who he's fighting or who's got these weird swords. Son, what? this is, this is not, <laughs> this is, brings a whole new, uh, idea to combat crawling. I want to, I want to see that again. So he immediately falls down by the weight of his weapon system. And <laughs> he just slides like a very strange slippery snake. Now remember, this is in, um, this is on the beta testing branch for tabs. So, uh, you know, maybe things are still being worked on like the, <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking we need a grenadier though, don't we? You know what we could do is edit Lieutenant Dan to also throw grenades. I think this would be the key thing, right? So, grenade? All right, no grenade, bomb. He's got a bomb throw, okay, that would be good. And his special ability, if he is a lieutenant, he could do a bomb spin, but I'm thinking we're gonna have him be able to dodge some stuff. So he's definitely gonna have the backwards dodge. All right, Lieutenant Dan, you're gonna be throwing grenades too. But then we're gonna need an average grunt who could also throw grenades, I think. Oh, you know what we want is a ranger. Now let's see, do we have any, do we have any other like, is there an M1A1, which is like the carbine variant? I mean, the closest thing is an M14. Oh my gosh, there's an MG42 in here as well. A ro oh, we need a bazooka, okay. <laughs> Look at this guy, yes. And we could give him a vest, maybe. Yeah, you know what, you're carrying a bazooka, you got a, you got a little bit of a, a vest there. Now the stats are gonna be quite critical. I'm thinking we'll buff you to 100, you're not a grunt. Your attack speed is slow, but your damage is like really, really high. And now what we need to do is test you out, let's see. Okay, you just wrecked those guys. I, it's always interesting, you, you see him from the front. Dude, see this guy's great because he holds his bazooka up and he doesn't fall over like the M2 Browning machine gunner. And I know we listed him as a light MG and then we gave him an M2 Browning, but you know what? Shh, don't tell anybody. Oh, I know what we need now. We need a medic. We need something to indicate he's a medic. <laughs> that could work. <laughs> See, he's got a medic bag on his back. All right, if we search medic, no. Heal? No. Doctor? A oh, plague doctor. <laughs> So look at this, uh, a medical hat. There we go. 
You're a medic, but we're gonna need to give you a different weapon. We're not gonna have a uh, BAR for you. We're gonna give you a Colt 911, 1911. All right, now your abilities is really, there's gotta be healing, right? Because the priest has a heal. Movement, defensive, miscellaneous, attack. How is there not the healing ability? Well, that sucks. Oh, there it is, the priest staff, okay. So we're gonna give him a priest staff. <laughs> <laughs> now we gotta make sure we give you decent health so you can stay alive. You are a medic after all. Okay, I, I think we're ready to try to do some D-Day invasions here with our new World War II faction. Now, do we have everybody here? The medic, the bazooka, the light machine gunner, which is not a light machine gun, USA grunt, Lieutenant Dan and the BAR. And so what we're gonna then need to do is find a map that gives us a lot of water option. And honestly, the pirate one kind of makes the most sense for now. Just because, you know, you could have them invading off of these boats here and storming the beach. But once we have a map creator, and especially if we could have scripted stuff like, say, some Higgins boats hitting the beach and some scripted machine gun fire from some pillboxes, you could really imagine how this could be far more epic than what it is. But what we need to do here is we're going to need to edit the line. Now, America is going to be, you know what, we're going to have them be the blues. So I think the formation we want to have is oh the grunts are at 240 dollars <laughs> i need to reprice them all right so here they are hitting the beach dude these guys look epic look at this man so we've got a bunch of grunts with their bars we've got one support bazooka a browning automatic rifle the medic here sitting with lieutenant dan and then we've got one ma deuce aka the m2 browning and they're gonna be storming the beach well as the first wave hits the beach who's gonna be defending it well we've got some cannons who are gonna to be the uh, pack anti-tank guns and heavy artillery that the Germans are supposed to have. We've got some Mauser car 98s and some snipers back here and we can work on a German faction if you guys would like to see more World War II battles here in tabs. So here we go. We're going to be rocking this in slow motion. I want to see just how far this wave gets. In fact, if they can actually take the beach, but this is some pretty impressive defensive weaponry. These are units we're already very familiar with in tabs. We know their potential. We know their damage. Those musketeers, the dead eyes, like, uh, this is going to be problematic. Oh, look at that cannonball just wrecking him. Okay. So that's like, oh no, Lieutenant Dan, Lieutenant Dan is down. We didn't even get it. Oh no, the medic is still alive and the, the grunts did not do well. Okay. I think what we might need to do is have some grunts storming off of the boats. These are going to be our Higgins boats. So they just hit the beach. These are the rangers that paratrooped in. <laughs> Even though they're actually on the beach, they should be probably behind. But you know what? This is doing a lot better. These grunts are storming the enemy position, and that was way too easy. Okay, so if we get rid of one of these, and we have maybe just a few more grunts on the beach, we'll have another line. And then I'm thinking maybe one more medic mixed in there. And I don't think the medic's going to be able to do much because grunts have such little health. Most of the units die. They, they don't even get the option to be healed, right? The medic priests aren't doing anything. But look at this, man. We're storming the beach. All right, big dog. Use that mod deuce. Oh, he didn't even get to do it. Okay, I'm kind of curious. I want to use this big heavy machine gun real quick so <laughs> we're, we're using it so much it's like it's pulling us back sorry about the friendly fire it's a training accident dude <laughs> but look at this dude man storm the beaches of normandy soldier whoa i just realized that there's like some grog over here maybe from winning this battle our guys can go have some extra rations of rum what is this the british navy okay so we took that beach I'm kind of curious though, who's gonna win, a Bazooka Boy or Lieutenant Dan? I'm kind of curious to see who's the most powerful unit here. <laughs> you take, <laughs> you take a Bazooka around to the chest, you're gonna have a bad time. Okay, what about the BAR? I think, I think the Bazooka just has the better range. So generally speaking, he usually gets the first shot. Oh, wait a minute, Red Team won. Hey, the BAR won that time. So let's have a couple grunts charging up. Oh, okay, they've got really good range. <laughs> What if, uh, you know, our World War II faction here had to fight some armies of darkness? I'm kind of curious to see how they're going to deal with... Wow. Okay, BARs are very, very effective. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Needless to say, when you're all ranged units up against um, some units that have very short range or no range at all, you're going to have a good time. Okay, so let's see. What if we added some heavy artillery? Like, what if the Germans, you know, the bad guys... 
are, are, are we the baddies? They, you know, got those nazi zombies out there. And we added some firepower of their own. Dang. A BAR firing line is really, really awesome. And for some reason, the BAR needs to get real close. But M1 Garands rip through skeletons. Like, all right, we're going to add some vampires to mix things up. Just to see if our brave squad of American heroes here... Can they... Oh my god, they shot the... Whoa. Oh, you know what? That was friendly fire from a bazooka, wasn't it? I think that may have been friendly fire from a bazooka. But look look at Lieutenant Dan chucking grenades using his Thompson here. He's not going to give up. <laughs> oh, okay. He's going to give up if he dies, though. <laughs> and then there's this guy. I'm a flipper little fnag. Would you shoot your dang gun? Like, what is the issue with you? I can't figure it out. I think if you want it done right, you got to do it yourself. So this is clearly a player controlled unit. Guys, get out of the way. Oh, but dude, I love this. Uh-oh, incoming catapult. Oh, we took out the boss. I love the sound effects. I may have just taken out the medic, but please don't put that on my performance record. But look at that, dude. Look at that. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, so we've been able to defeat these guys and the price difference, even though my guys may not be priced appropriately, uh, we were still able to take these out. We're gonna add a few more reapers and you know what, just for fun. I wanna see if they can defeat the dark peasant. This squad versus the Dark Peasant. Now, I'm thinking what we're gonna need to do is hit him with a bazooka. Oh gosh. All right, fire! Did we do anything? Oh no, he blocks all incoming range projectiles. Okay, so needless to say, defeating the Dark Peasant's gonna be very difficult. We need to go to the epic planes of battle here on the ancient sandbox. And now we're just gonna see if- I'm gonna put a few machine guns. I don't know if these guys are gonna fire very well. I'm gonna do a bunch of bazookas because hopefully that overwhelms the shield mechanism. I'm not sure. A bunch of BARs. A few lieutenants here to guard them. Maybe grenades will help. We need some heavy artillery. A bunch of medics. And then so many grunts. All right. Let's see. Is, are they hitting him? I'm not seeing any of these projectiles getting in there. Oh no, man. I don't know. Like, how do you actually kill the Dark Peasant? Like, the Super Peasant King, you need to have melee units. And we just don't. So, World War II faction, we've done D-Day. We've had him fight the Dark Peasant, which still invincible. I think we're gonna need to handcraft a unit. We've tried before, but if you guys have any suggestions and you guys wanna see more tabs, let me know by pulling the trigger on that like button. But if you have some uh, units, custom units we could try, leave them in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Guten Tag, Hans. Hans, Hans, are you there? Uh, ja, Fritz, what is up and stuff? Hans, the Germans. What, Fritz? The Germans are coming! Back to the unit creator. You guys have been giving me a lot of feedback on the last video. Check this out. So we're gonna go in and I realized something that you realized. You guys realized it. I, I, didn't, I didn't do it actually. And we have to do this. So targeting type. This is our medic, right? He's carrying the priest wand. And this is part of the American World War II faction. Right? Because we're going out there giving everybody freedom whether they like it or not. You got oil, you get freedom in return. We'll take that oil. Or so the meme goes. Now, the issue here is targeting type, we need to closest friend. Least health friend gets the healing. So let's let's see. Are you are you sir? Oh yeah, I guess you're carrying a pistol, but you're not really allowed to also hurt other people. Hey, where are you going? Get back here! And I, I don't think you can make him heal and shoot. So we're gonna take away his Colt 1911. And we're gonna save this. Now, one of the other issues that you guys brought to bear, and this was Balaz. And Keycrafter was the one who helped with the medic. So Balaz was saying that if we want this guy to stand up, we need to increase his weight. We need him to be a thick boy. You a thick boy? So how about a nice thick of... Hold on, I think I know what to do here. Same point. Nine zero x Perfect. We're gonna overwrite him, and then we're gonna go ahead and test Mr. LMG. Can you... Can you... <laughs> what did you just get hit? Oh, a catapult. I was like, did you just get hit by a catapult? He's like, yes, sir, I did just get hit by a catapult. But I'm a thick boy and ain't no catapult rocks. You won't knock me over. Sir, what is wrong with your machine gun? Is this what you do when nobody's watching? You just flop your barrel around? So just like that, we learned a few things about the unit creator. 
together. Now, Cynthia Bowles was saying that they're gonna get tabs for Christmas. If you do, you can get it on Epic Games and use Baron Vaughn Games in the Epic Games Store, and you're giving me some Christmas too, all right? But one of the biggest requests was, Baron, after making America in the unit creator, why don't you create the Germans so the Americans have somebody to fight, yes? Now he's gotta make all the Germans. So we need a particularly German symbol here. Anything that's German in here? An iron cross would be appropriate. Well, Thor's lightning. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. It's the iron cross. The Germans. And their color has to be like, you know, a dark grayish blue or maybe a gray. So the gray it is. But now we need units for them. So first things first, we need ourselves a wobbler. A wiggler, a wobbling wiggles. And you, sir, are going to be blue. Dabba D, dabba die. Now, what is a particularly German sounding voice? I'm thinking a Jarl. That's very aggressive. We're gonna make him the Berserkers. Now, you are gonna be a ranged unit just like the American. Uh, excuse me, you're going to be very uh, German and very ranged. We, we will not use the American accent. No, not today. Your weapon will be the Minotaur. I'm just kidding. We're not gonna give you pig hands. Now we need the first German grunt. So that is a two-handed rifle. Please use it appropriately or we shall write you up. Now as far as helmets are concerned, well, we've already got World War Helmet 1. Look at that! Already! All you need is some pants and you are a veritable German soldier. Going out, fight the capitalists. The thing about this is we need to change its color, right? Because if their uniform is this like grayish blue we're gonna have, let's see, what is the uniform color must be wunderbar. If not, it will be kaput. I think we're gonna have to go with the grays to match the helmet. There we go, there it is. Yes, yes. And, and you may now call me your leader. Um, in your language, it is the Führer. You will call me the leader of the Germans. I will also be the leader of the Americans, but uh, I'm not gonna tell you that. I'm basically gonna just Palpatine USA and Germany here. All right, Germany, what say you? Hmm? Are you spreckening over there? All right, let's get some grays. It's, it's coming together quite nicely. Let's make this like a darker. There we go. I feel like that's more fitting, right? Of their uniforms. Now, guys, you have to keep in mind, it may not be totally, it may not be historically accurate, but it will be totally accurate. We need some pants. The boots and pants, boots and pants. So please take off the pants. We need to give you the combat pants. Oh, there it is, right there. <laughs> A He-Man Speedo. And we get them to the right gray. Und wunderbar, yes. Now what about the belt? There we go. Now we're gonna give you some boots. And they're nice and brown, which is like standard issue GI, but I feel like the Germans, they were, you know, definitely a bit darker. Yes, everything was a little darker in Germany at the time. If you spreck what I'm saying. There we go, you saw a German. But one of the other things we can do is, I guess it's under torso, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, it is. We go down here and look at this. This is something we couldn't do in the other one because this grenade is known as the potato masher because it looks like a mallet at which you smash potatoes. Potatoes, peel them, mash them, put them in a stew. Yeah, the grunt. And your statistics, you're gonna have a, a relatively slow fire rate, okay? Because you're a bolt action. But this thing's gonna hit a little bit harder. I remember playing old school World War II first person shooters and always just using this Car 98 and it packed a punch. Now I believe the American Grunt was like a 50, but they had, you know, a, a semi-automatic fire rate. Now you, on the other hand, you'll you'll be a little bit better. Und, und bit, a little bit better. So now that we've got the grunt, and we can adjust his price, but honestly, if we're just doing custom battles, it won't matter. More money, more problems. Now what we need to do, the Sturmgewehr. I think we need to add this man a weapon. Oh, oh yes, the Roman Legion. No, none of that. Excuse me. We need the first assault rifle. This rifle is so beautiful, it assaulted people. Oh my god, do they not have it? There's no STG-44? <gasps> this is- oh my gosh. Germany's gonna start World War III just for this slight alone. Oh my goodness. Oh my boots and pants. Well, you get the MP40 then, I guess, friend. Uh, you're gonna be a potato mashing, uh, 
I don't know, man. I, I feel a little bit bad about it. So your statistics are going to need to be upgraded. Your attack speed is 3.00. Eh, MP40s are, are 2.1. And damage is going to be a little bit lower because it, it's firing pistol rounds. You'll get 100 health. So you're not even this. You're the machine and pistol. 40. And if you guys may be like, hey, Baron, that's terrible German spelling. I'm not actually German, you see. <laughs> Hans, get the camera. They're looking so wunderbar right now. Now, this guy is going to be the buzzsaw. The buzzsaw of World War II. So we got to make sure this guy's statistics are appropriate. But before we do that, we need to remove that and remove that. You will not be carrying this extra stuff. What you will be carrying is a little bit of extra bullets those eight millimeter strange bullets because you guys just had to be difficult and what was it a 796 or something weird like that you're also going to be blue double d double die you know this you know it to be true now your hit points you gotta withstand combat with the americanas your weight is gonna be adequate to support the big gun. Your attack speed is gonna be like 10, okay? And the damage will do a one. Oh man, you don't wanna see that coming at you, I'll tell you what. Now we've got the Panzer Grenadier. Because this man, well, he's actually gonna use that potato masher. Now this is where we finally get to use some special abilities. Because what we need is to find the one where he throws the bombs. He could do a bomb spin, or alternatively, we could use the bomb throw, which is what I think we're gonna do. Now, as far as your weapons are concerned, we've gotta get rid of this thing. So you'll have to take the MP40, and this will be a one-handed weapon since you will be throwing bombs. And since you're a Panzer Grenadier, well, you're really using the Blitzkrieg strategies, so you will be, you're gonna have 2x speed normal. And finally, the Germans, I think they were called Ober Lieutenants, but we're gonna call him Uber. Uber? Uber Lieutenant. German. Yeah, I don't know, really. And I'm thinking what we do is, well, I saw these Rugers in here. Where are they? A Luga. So we got twin Lugers. Look at this guy. Yeah. And your ability is going to have to be... Well, we're going to have you have some abilities to dodge. Now, as an officer, you're not going to be carrying your pack. We need some kind of, like, officer's uh, collars. I guess one of the things we could do is give you some vests or something or a giant banana. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Look at that. <laughs> There's this, which kind of works. Oh, you could wear a cape. You know what? We're giving you we're giving you a cape, man. Oh yes, quite right, old chap. A spot of tea. And so your speed, well, you're gonna have one X attack damage. You're not gonna be doing a whole lot. Your attack speed is gonna be, we'll go 1.7215422568988888888377462-3, you know what I'm saying? It's gonna be good that way. And you're an officer, so you've gotta get 350. Your weight is gonna be 1.3. So let's go ahead and save you after changing. All right, the Uber Lieutenant. You're looking super Uber with that cape. And we've got some Germans, so we need to add them to our clearly an Iron Cross, and not a fan shield insignia. So now we do have the Germans. But real quick, do we have any heavy ordnance other than bazooka? Oh, you know what they could do? I know what they're gonna do. They're gonna have a charge flag. Yes. You, my friends, are the Blitzkrieg. The Blitzkrieg, which stands for Lightning War. I mean, can you believe if you were a YouTuber named your name after the Lightning War? I mean, what are you, you living in North Dakota or something? And you need to be able to survive a lot because you're gonna take a lot of bullets. And your movement speed's gonna need to be 1.2. He <laughs> lightning attack. All right, so now each faction has six units and I, I feel like that's appropriate. So six Germans versus six Americans. Freedom versus the lightning war. Well, let's see who wins on the epic field of battle known as the ancient sandbox. The battlefield where many, many a nation and faction has had to fight for glory. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is just see how this works out. We're gonna have one American, one of each unit, and we're gonna see just how well they do. I, I don't know how this is gonna work because honestly, when you make factions, you want to test them out, but that's essentially what we're doing right now. We'll put the flag in the middle. So at least he rushes with, all right. Germany 
How goes the war? Oh, it's it's forlorn. The Krieg is forlorn. Berlin is kaput. But man, you look pretty dope in that cape. Kind of reminds me of the dude from like the uh, Battlefield 1 trailer. All right, so do they blitz? <laughs> <laughs> this guy, I think, judging by the fact that he's holding a grenade, he was the panzer grenadier. He just took a bazooka round straight to the face. Oh! Oh, I thought the mod deuce was knocked out already. Oh! Dang! Car 98 is the last guy alive. Oh, you ain't gonna be alive much longer. Although, if the enemy just keeps missing you like that... Oh, you got hit right in the gonads. So what did we learn? That currently, the Americans are better than the German faction. <laughs> I made them all, so what if we did, like, a bunch of grunts? And we did the Blitzkrieg here, and then we had on the other side, well, two machine guns and a BAR. Because as the joke goes, ten Germans walked into a bar. <laughs> Nobody came out. Wait a minute, they're not rushing. Yeah, they, they stopped. I guess because they're not melee, they don't run in. Oh, wow. Okay, so just give us the Germans a bunch of powerful bolt actions and they can decimate. Hmm. What if we put some grunts in the front line here? Oh, well, there we go. Oh, man, the entire first line of M1 Garands just fell to the enemy fire. But only we need- we only need one bazooka round. Ahem. <clears throat> Sir, we only needed one bazooka round and we probably could have won. Guten Tag, Hans! Hans, Hans, are you there? Ah, uh, yeah, Fritz. W what is up? And stuff. Hans, the Germans. What, Fritz? The Germans are coming! Well, I mean, kind of, sort of, but also not really at the same time because they don't use their blitzkrieging strategy, which they used to just absolutely take over Poland and France in the early parts of World War II. Oh, man. If you could pick up units off of the ground in tabs, I think what we need is maybe some heavy weaponry. All right, so I want to see if a few tanks here, which I can't modify yet, unfortunately, mixed with... Can I put them... Oh, I wish I could put them on top of the tanks. I'm going to put three blitzers here, and then I think the Americans are going to need a couple of extra bazookas stationed out. I want to see, do... Can the Germans implement their old and classic World War II strategy of running the tanks at you very, very fast? They also had radios, and apparently that was pretty important. But look at those things versus some bazookas. And now you just have... Have these guys dancing in the background guys it's what are you attacking each other for that's very confusing actually guys i think it's time to take down the blue flag and put up the white one all right well now that we've done it we're gonna put a few more germans behind them i think you know a bunch of grunts and uh maybe a buzzsaw and the uber lieutenant leading them in the pentagranadiers on the flanking the flanking if you're on the flanking it's much easier to do the spanking at least that's uh, what I've learned about strategy in all my years of playing video games. And sitting on my butt. Americans defend the lines. Now, if if we wanted to put landmines in the game, I think the best thing to do for that was to have a few barrel rollers. You know, because they, they can act as landmines, right? Oh my gosh. Okay, the guys on top of the barrels are just being chucked into the high heavens here. And man, the American industrial machine is not to be messed with. Who's going to win? The American industrial, military industrial complex was the German efficiency. And apparently, oh, you know what it is? I had these guys target their nearest friend. So they're trying to slap each other. <laughs> Hold on. We need to uh, target the enemy, I guess. Uh, I don't really know how to do this. Rider? Oh my God, I can make them ride my own units? Well, that's interesting. So I, if I, if I, <laughs> I don't think that, <laughs> I tried to have him, oh, what, what am I, where am I? Why are there a dozen kings inside of a Da Vinci tank? What is happening? What, what is, what is this? It said test the unit and it just blew up. Okay, uh, I think my giant hot dog Spider-Man thing is just so OP that he gets paired with a comparable monetary value of units, maybe? Uh, th this was a bad idea. We're gonna get rid of that and we're gonna save and we're gonna overwrite. So now you won't slap our own units. All right, Americans in red, the Germans in blue. You know what? Actually, we're going to have them just battle on the ships. And so what we're going to do is we're going to have some American heavy machine gun installations where you'd normally have cannons, uh, because even though the bazookas, I guess, should probably be there. We're going to have them at the front because American tactics. You know what? That's what we're doing. I mean, we're bled by the notorious, the renowned Lieutenant Dan. And he's got a whole army of grunts on these bridges led by, oh, multiple medics. We're going to need medic. Get the Bangalores. 
And then the Germans, well, you know what? They are the defenders, right? So, uh, a few of these. We're gonna need a few landmines, though. Yeah, you gotta get those landmines. And then the Iron Cross fan shield will need the grunts. Maybe a few, uh, MP40s. And America! America the beautiful- Wow, you guys just don't need a charge at all. Your weapons seem to just have the range. Oh my god. This is not a historical representation of D-Day. However, what this is, is a totally accurate reenactment. Where America, America the free, free, America the brave, America in those olive green pants. Your, your pants are so olive green and fantastic, guys. But look at this. That's just so much freedom in one picture. It just, you love to see it, truly. But I'm thinking what we need to do is I need to make a unit called Captain Banzai. Now, his sword needs to be... What? Okay, I was like... Mm. He needs to have a katana and it needs to be two-handed because that's why it has such a long hilt. It's long, it's strong, it gets the friction on. But as far as a weapon, we need to make him... I'm thinking super jump. Let's go ahead and test him real quick. Okay, yeah, that's exactly what the bonsai would... So, Japan? We got Japanese hair, yeah. He's definitely gonna have... Oh... He looks like a veritable ronin. I mean, he's naked, but he's on his way. And as far as a hat? Conical hat. Look at that. I love it. Okay, now he needs a Japanese military uniform. And I'm gonna make a few of my own units, but then we're gonna be checking out the workshop to see what everybody else has created. Created. Oh, that looks, that looks beautiful to me. Now, he does need pants, although if he wasn't using pants, it could be pretty intimidating to the enemy if some guy was going, it'll take a bonsai, and then bum rushing you naked. You know, I, I would probably be pretty terrified myself. And World War boots look like they fit, but obviously these pants are not the proper color of tan that matches, although I feel like they were more like this color. Now, if you're the captain of the Special Naval Landing Force, the SNLF, which was the elite for the Japanese in the Pacific, you're gonna have to have an elite number of hit points. And your unit weight needs to be able to survive bullets, right? Movement speed is just a little bit higher than normal because you are proud of your emperor. And your damage is gonna be really good. So we'll make it three times the usual. So we'll test him in battle and see- oh my god, we- <laughs> All right, so how does he do it against a bunch of uh, peasants uh, with pitchforks? I think his attack speed needs to be a little bit better. Yeah, because he's, he's just getting forked with pitches right now, and it doesn't look like it's very good. So attack speed's got to be 3.67. All right, so now with the greater attack speed, how does he do? Oh, yeah. He's definitely holding his sword much better. He's cutting everybody down much faster. Although there is a hobbit grabbing onto his pants. So... Those hobbits, man. Someone needs to tell them. Look at this. This is amazing. You can't pause in test mode. But I mean, if that just doesn't show the power of this guy, I don't know what else does. Now, I think what we're going to have to do here is definitely see if we, like, what World War II, World War? We need to see if there's any Arasaka rifles or any of the World War II Japanese weaponry, because I'm actually surprised that there's not more options, but we'll see. I mean, you can't have a grenade launcher. That didn't seem like it would be very fair. All right, so the... Like, we've got the American BAR, we've got double barrel shotguns, we've got the M1 Garand- Oh, we have a car 98, so I guess that could be worked? Well, that is unfortunate, because when you look at the workshop, there was some really, really good factions. You Look at this, the, the World War II ones pop up, but Empire of Japan is right there, and it looks like- Now, if we typed World War II in battles, would we find any, like, amazing? What about- Japan. A lot of things could come up. Godzilla versus Japan, that's amazing. Japan versus China, the Battle of Japan. Japan is at war with itself. <laughs> oh, and then you have uh, the Japanese first invasions on Korea, uh, China and Korea. But I don't see any World War II ones. This one actually looks pretty interesting. I kind of want to play this real quick just to see. It's it's in the 1500s and that was what? It was, was that during the Samurai? Oh my gosh. These are custom units. Like, look at this. Oh my god, that's gorgeous. Okay, so two, it, it looks like they're equal Japanese armies here. Is is this during the, uh, the feudal times where there was the shoguns? And what were the other guys called? Like, you wanted to be shogun. Shogun was essentially like being the king or emperor. And then daimyo? Oh man, dude. That's what it was. I remember playing, like, that was the first 
Total War, Shogun Total War, that there ever was in the first one that I ever played. And then Shogun 2 was amazing. Did any of you guys ever play the Total War games? I keep wondering if whenever there's like a new DLC or if there's a new update, if we shouldn't try out um, and show off some of the factions because it is one of the best battle simulators out there. So if you guys want to see that, let me know. Obviously, if you're enjoying the tabs video, pull the trigger on the like button because this is a pretty cool battle, but everybody, it's so even that everybody's fighting in the middle and it looks like there are a few champions. I don't know why they didn't have powers before, but they all of a sudden do now. But that's not what we're here for. We need to first find an amphibious map where we can have them invade from. And uh, this is probably the best one there's going to be. So what we could do here is we will edit the line here and the Japanese are going to be attacking. And then the Americans are going to be defending this ship as if it is a military base. But I just realized that we have forgotten to get the Americans. The war machine is what they're called. How appropriate. Two time World War champs. I think one of the best things or one of the next things that Tabs needs is a map editor. That would be epic. Oh, they have kamikazes. Oh my gosh. Okay, so let's see. Let's see how the kamikaze works. All right, we, we gotta check out this faction. <laughs> okay. I, I don't think that's how you do it. You just hit him with the big explodey bits. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so that was the kamikaze. Now we have the Imperial Japanese man. Rifleman type five. We've got assault troops, anti-tank. Now the only way to test an anti-tank is, well, with a tank. Oh, this dude with the anti-tank gun just immediately took out a Da Vinci tank. That's $4,000 absolutely negated right there. Oh man, kamikaze pilot? I don't know about that. We'll put him up against a few shields and see what happens. He's got to jump at them? Do you- you don't explode. I, I guess you're just carrying a sword. Okay, you're, you're kind of like an officer in a way. <laughs> you're jump kicking everybody in the nuts. Rifle grenade? All right, let's see this rifle grenade in action. Oh my god. If I'm hitting the beach, I'm sending these guys in first, man. Well, that one actually kind of missed. Yeah, they, there's an AOE on it, and I guess accuracy is needed to some degree. So that's pretty dang good. Now, how many more units do we have? We have the Marines, which is the SNLF. So if we send a bunch of these guys in, they've all got Kalashnikovs here as stand-ins for their... What, weren't they type 100 submachine guns? For those of you who love to play the World War II FPSs. And then we've got an assault marine. Will they run in there? Oh, they've also got grenades. Oh, dude, I don't know, man. The, the Japanese are probably gonna do a pretty good job. Okay, but still we can't customize vehicles. So maybe before custom maps and tabs, what do you guys think? I feel like we need custom vehicles. Imperial sniper. All right, we'll put him back here and see what his range is. Okay, he's not moving, so he does have pretty good range. Oh, he's dead eye, isn't he? And look at this. Oh my gosh, he's got a Geely suit on. I love it. Okay, that's fantastic. He's got a little bit of a slow reload, but it is a bolt action rifle and you gotta aim small, miss small. Is he gonna be able to take out all the shields before they get to him? <laughs> <laughs> he can karate kick him. Okay, now he's holding his rifle behind his back because I guess he wants to challenge. How does this... He's, he aimed to his right, but fired to his left. All right, this sniper is really freaking good, man. Everybody knows uh, karate here, apparently. <laughs> so, sniper is awesome. And the, and the machine gunner, I mean, come on. He's using a BAR, is it? No, it's MG42. Oh my god, hold on. Dude, this is well done because there's a little nuance here. Okay, so the Japanese light machine guns sounded like woodpeckers, and they, fi and they fired so slow. Normally, the MG42 is incredibly fast. This shows you the quality of this custom faction because it sounds like that and it fires so slow this already i'm impressed i know just enough about world war ii to be uh dangerous in commentary but like that right there is something that i definitely appreciate now he probably needs to increase his weight so he can lay down without backpedaling into the water and then you know dishonoring his family oh shameful display that is unacceptable this imperial japanese captain here who looks like he's got a pistol and a katana, and he's got the jump ability. Oh, and he, and he calls an artillery strike naturally because he's an officer and you can do that. <laughs> 
Dude, this unit is amazing. Let's see how they stack up against the Americans. So the artillery barrage is great. I bet you there's there's got to be some campaigns. Oh, now we have a colonel. Now, what does the colonel do? More artillery barrages? He doesn't jump in there. Okay, never mind. He does if they get close enough. <laughs> he can punt them into the ozone layer. Oh, artillery barrage softens them up. Then he goes in there with some kicks, some pistols, some katana swipes. And I love how he's got a dagger and he has a very like, you know, impressive Fu Manchu going on there. The factions in tabs go through the ages, everything from the ancient world, I guess all the way down to Hades and, and good people too. But there's no like modern faction. The most modern weapons are a man with two thumbs on each hand, I guess. So it begs the question, just how powerful would a Vietnam War era faction be where you've got M16s, 1911 semi-automatic pistols and K-bar knives that can penetrate Iron Man's armor? Take it easy. This has not been backed up by the FDA. You've got things like shotguns, high-powered armor-piercing sniper rounds. Oh yeah, and bazookas firing shaped charges, 50 caliber belt-fed machine guns, and special forces operators. Just how powerful would these guys be? Well, we're gonna test them out. Man, look at how big and brawny this guy is. You can tell by his beard. This guy has no eyes. Oh, it's sunglasses. Anyway, the Vietnam era faction, one of each unit versus 100 man armies, just to test these guys and their modern firepower. It's kind of interesting. Like why doesn't Tabs, oh my God, bazookas are overpowered. Why doesn't Tabs have a modern faction? Is it because for all of the reasons that we think? Like ballistics based weaponry that is semi and fully automatic is just incredibly powerful for even someone like a Zeus. These guys are outnumbered greatly and look at this, even though they sometimes don't understand how to fire rifles properly, they're still able to hit the target. Well, I guess when they're massing up in great quantities. So we are going to see of all of the factions in their 100 man armies, which one can give the Vietnam era the hardest challenge. But we're also going to be doing things like trying out melee and ranged units because yeah, it's easy to shoot a bunch of idiots with clubs, but what if they can throw those clubs and those clubs are really freaking sharp. All right, boys, you may fire when ready. Can, it, can any, oh, we got one spear away and it was blocked by this man's magical radio pack. I guess he's special forces for a reason. The sniper has no qualms with shooting the enemy in the back. Although when you're outnumbered by this much, I don't know. I don't think I would be worried about it either. Look at this. And these guys are like, I don't know what to do. I'll just keep dying. Maybe I should hang out and see what the magic man's doing with the boom boom stick. Now, this brave soldier, oh my gosh, I didn't even get to interview him. He's already dead. The range on these guys is pretty impressive. Look at this. Oh, <laughs> the M16 battle rifle. He took a, a spear, it looked like straight to his Kevlar armor right in the throat. Man, still kicking. And wait, he's still kicking. <laughs> I love this guy. He's like, man, I just got stabbed with a spear so hard. I'm shooting backwards. Oh my God. This one is a victory. This guy hit the wall with his spear. 100 hobbits. Oh my God, what just happened? They just assassinated my camera. I wasn't even controlling a unit. Did you see that? I wish we had a number counter, like so I could tell how many units were still alive on the enemy team. But needless to say, hobbits, these poor hobbits. These aren't your Sam, Mary, Pippin, and Frodo varieties of hobbits. No, these are they're just target practice. Purda, purda, purda. I forgot I voiced this guy too. 100. Now, instead of just limiting the range, we're gonna bring the base unit and then 100 special units. And I felt like these guys do have range. Technically that's 300 units, right? Cause there's three guys on a wheelbarrow, but also there's a lot of uh, wonkiness. And I think just getting down the ramp is going to be a challenge, much like it is for my graphics card monitor to keep up with the frame rate of this thing. Because as soon as I go off slow motion, six frames a second, 10, I don't know. It's bad. Oh God. It's going chaotic. We've got massive explosions. We've got Vietnam era soldiers break dancing with 50 caliber machine guns. That doesn't seem safe. Oh, that's a bad time to reload there, pistol boy. I guess you do have a knife. <laughs> Bazooka guy's like, friendly fire? What friendly fire? Oh, he's gonna get wrecked. But look at him go. <laughs> 
100. Bows and arrows. Now, I'm very curious to see if any of these guys get their arrows off. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Okay, I was gonna say, I don't think any of the arrows are gonna go off. Now, this is where things could get bad for the Vietnam era. Now, a lot of these guys are dodging out of the way. Some actually have an active deflection device. This guy got hit right in the thigh. No, not in the thigh. In his rifle. What a lucky guy. And somehow, some way, not a single soldier had fallen <laughs> until the sniper decided to try to dodge an arrow and his life was forfeited to the abyss. None of them have been killed by enemy fire yet. However, as soon as they start turning this corner, look at that. Oh, this guy. Oh, <laughs> this guy always gets hit in the throat. I don't know what it is, man. All right. Two soldiers down, three are down. Four are down. Oh, but the 50 cal is laying down. He's got a bazooka guy just slapping arrows out of the sky. Look at this. This guy's firing with an arrow sticking out of his molar tooth. Oh, that has to be the most inaccurate shot I think I've seen all day. And that is impressive. Bazooka's down. The spec ops marksman is still calling in artillery strikes and dropping them with the semi-automatic fire of an M14 battle rifle. There are still three archers, including this man with, has to be the totally accurate strangest neck I've seen in my entire Tab's career. But Spec Ops boy did the dang thing and this guy's like, I've seen some things. 100 shields. Gosh, that first strike is absolutely devastating. I think the Spec Ops guy is the one who's able to call in artillery. Does, is he the one with the radio pack? He sure is. Uh, his face is being blocked by 50 caliber box. Oh, wow. Shields cannot block bullets. Well, at least these shields can't. Look at this. This is just a burial ground. And the last soldier who doesn't know how to walk. But this is where it gets tricky. <laughs> Because the classical era faction has snake archers. Oh god, this is this is not gonna be good. Modern weaponry, I mean, it, uh, I don't care who you are. No one wants to fight a hundred snakes. Look at this guy. Doesn't matter how well trained you are. This guy just dodged them all, jumped down, is calling artillery in on himself. Danger close because there's a snake biting his gonads. And he's gone. Snakes are terrifying, guys. It seems... Oh God, the bazooka guy just committed Sudoku. Look at this. <laughs> if they were a little bit more accurate, maybe they do good, but like, look at this. There are so many snakes. Oh gosh, they're, they're, uh, Jesus, that's a lot of snakes. Look at this 50 caliber, like, oh man, he's gonna be the only one left. <laughs> look at him, what are you doing? This man is so terrified of snakes, he is breaking the laws of physics. And he's butt shimmying all the way back up to the top of the tower. Oh God. His days are numbered. <laughs> Someone put a bayonet on that 50 cal. This poor man is snake bait. Here's where it gets interesting. Samurais, in theory, can block singular bullets. Maybe not bursts or fully automatic, but they can block a couple of them. So these guys should survive a little bit better and maybe even make it over the bridge, depending on how effective that bazooka guy is. Because I'd wager they probably lost a third of their numbers right there at that first salvo. That's why we incorporated range units, because here against melee, it's unfair. But against range, it seems to even out. They both get their salvos off. I love this. This is like the last samurai. Oh my god, the last samurai has no neck. Or his eyes are huge. They are dilated. Oh, the bazooka guy missed? Oh no. The samurai charging. Oh, uh, that guy's like, yeah, I'm out of here. Spec Ops, they needed you. Okay, that guy's got a pretty powerful kick. The 50 caliber machine gun just cannot stabilize itself. It looks like this is a zombie movie and he's like the last surviving human, but instead it's death by a thousand katana cuts. And the sniper, oh, you don't have the fire rate to deal with this brother. You're dead, but it's about to get crazier because we have 100 fireworks archers. If any of them can get a single hit on these guys. Oh, they hit the bazooka guy first. Oh, I thought he was gonna fly off the map. Instead, he's break dancing. Oh, he's off. Okay, that's a huge win. And the sniper just, yep, you're gone. They just lost two of their best units. The bazooka and the marksman. Oh no. 
Shotgun guys charging. Oh, hold on. We have liftoff. Remember, during the Vietnam era, there was also the space race, and it looks like we have our own space race right now, and it looks like this guy is winning. I feel like there should be an Easter egg where if you can get a guy to land on the moon, you unlock a moon level where there's like artificial gravity. This is why I want to be a game developer, because I want to be the one who's able to make those decisions for games. Oh, and I cannot wait to share with you guys the next project I'm working on. By the way, Bot Wars is going to be getting an update soon where we're going to be adding not a 50 caliber machine gun, but a minigun. Bot Wars is available on Steam. Oh, wait a minute. Okay. Wow. I thought they were going to run away with this one, but the Fireworkers Archers lost. Now, the range unit, and this is where it's going to get nasty. 100 muskets. Now, if any of these guys fire, and oh my god, so many of them fired. This is the most devastation I've seen against the Vietnam era in the opening salvo. Let's see, they lost, well, there's a shotgun and a bazooka, and the sniper too? I think that might be one of the shotguns or bazooka guys. So they have four units left. They lost three in the opening salvo. That does not bode well because one of those, well, was the bazooka and the other one was marksman. And marksman always picks off a few guys in this early stage. And then the bazooka is usually the one who holds the bridge. Without those units, this is not looking good. Oh my God, this man is just, he just ro fell over like a dead crab or something. Muskets. It's like, well, what if some guy brought an automatic Kalashnikov to, uh, you know, the Napoleonic Wars? Well, if they had a hundred muskets versus one guy with a Kalashnikov, I think we know still who wins. Wait a minute. There's a chance here. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. The Spec Ops guy's holding it down. If you have a, like, a fully automatic battle rifle and access to a, a radio with an artillery. Uh-oh. There's still a few more. Oh, he, he pulled it off. Are you kidding me? That was the most impressive win I've seen. But what about 100 bomb throwers? Oh, they got some of the bombs away. Only one made it over to this platform and it looked like it nicked the bazooka guy like in the heels. So not enough. You, you can't, why can they never decide what to do? I'm so curious what's going on in their totally accurate brains. Uh oh, uh oh, oh, what just happened? The guy got hit by friendly artillery and flung at the enemy where he died. Spec Ops guy called in a danger close artillery strike and got friendly fire. That was incredible. Oh my bazookas. Yeah, it's like, oh, you got bombs. That's cool. Well, we got a bomb tube and it's effective. And he, he just, he's blocking grenades <laughs> with his shotgun before dying doing a death cartwheel and falling off the map. And then Bazooka Guy's like, you know what? I'm going to raise the difficulty level a little bit. Watch this. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. That guy's playing on easy mode. What about fire archers? Oh, my God. They're throwing their rip cages at them. Ooh, they got the Bazooka Guy on fire. Now, is he going to keep dying? Oh, it looks like those flak jackets are also fireproof. So that is, well, that bodes well for them. All right, so as long as the sniper, I'm wondering if he's going to get friendly artillery striked again. No, he's like, nope, I'm out of here. I saw what happened in that alternate dimension. Dr. Strange talked to me. He's like, get out of here. But fire muffins. Look at this guy. He's like, I'm prepared for fire. I got a gas mask on. Brody, you are not prepared for this much smoke. Oh, bazookas. Bones going everywhere. And then there's like the last guy. I love how when they die, they just shatter. Look at that. Oh, that's incredible. But things are gonna get harder because the Wild West faction was like, you know what? If we just put people in cactus armor, that's gotta be effective, right? I like when they died, like spikes fling everywhere. Oh, wait a minute, how did they, how did these guys get way up here? Oh, uh-oh, Spec Ops guy, one of the best soldiers fell right in front of two of these guys. Oh man, he's firing his gun actually backwards at his friends. He looks like a porcupine. Uh-oh. This does not bode well for his chances of survival. And he's dead. I actually think the bazooka... Oh my god, look at this. This is why I love physics. We're gonna pause this. I need to see if this man is alive or not. Okay, those are X eyes. So he's dead, but he can't fall off because his dead friend is keeping him up. That's physics right there. I love this game. I don't think I've seen that in... Oh, there he goes. So cactus armor is good, but it, it doesn't compare to flak jackets. 
That's an interesting uh, firing line you got there. He's like, you can't see. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Oh, look at this. What is totally accurate tactics, boys? Man, he's firing off his shoulder. That guy would be deaf. But now we get into the legacy faction. I feel like of all the legacy faction units, the boxer was probably the most famous cheap melee unit other than maybe the peasant and then obviously range you guys know what the range unit's gonna be especially if you've been watching tabs since the beginning y you guys know you know uh oh you're gonna push your friend off the cliff ooh, ooh, ah. oh that's that's devastating they have a decent amount of health though these boxers are able to suffer and endure oh wow oh my oh that bazooka it got rid of a lot of friendly units, but that may have held them off. Spec Ops is calling in artillery. Where's Spec Ops? Is he up there? Oh my gosh, I think they just won. <gasps> the Boxers won. If you called it the Poachers, give yourself a round of applause. Maybe, you know what? There you go. Go buy yourself a cheeseburger. Unless you're vegan, I guess. Or you just don't like them, which I'm like, what? Who doesn't like them? Poachers! Oh, they- I don't think they have very good range. Oh, man. In the old day, I remember doing a poachers only campaign challenge. And it was amazing. Like, you could win the entire campaign using only poachers. They- some of them gotta get their shots off, right? Why do the poachers have, like, these amazing haircuts and really cool, like, clothes? They're just supposed to be dudes with short bows. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, these guys are getting hit! Look at Little Head! He's like, I got a Kevlar jacket. Oh, man. Yeah, poachers got wrecked. Boxers win, poachers lose. What is going on in the Tabs world? Needless to say, this faction is very powerful. Not invincible, but pound for pound, the heaviest hitting faction from top to bottom. Vietnam era against 100 man armies. It's time to finish surviving 100 days. In our last video, we've survived 52. The rules are simple. If we lose any of these battles, we lose. So to lose, we have to lose. Got it. The rules really are simple. Oh my God, I, I can have modded units. <laughs> oh, you sweet summer child. We'll have to keep that in our back pocket <clears throat> and pull it out immediately. I've got an operator. I don't know what he does. You know what? I know what he does. He fights on the front line. Who would have known that to survive 100 days, all we needed was modern weaponry? Because modern problems require, oh my god, modern solutions. Where did all these guys come from? I just got 450 caliber machine guns. Gentlemen, light them up. <laughs> this is amazing. This reminds me of like stories I've heard about the Korean War. I mean, obviously I wasn't there. Gentlemen, fire when ready. <clears throat> Am I gonna- I'm gonna have to do this myself. Blah, 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 Oh, God. Okay, good. Look at this man. Just two bros hugging it out and firing high-powered machine guns together in the <clears throat> frozen north. The Temple of Zeus is being invaded by yours truly, and defending it is, well, a minotaur. And, you guessed it, Zeus. Now, this one looks pretty crazy. I'm thinking we want some marksmen. You got guys up here? That's cool. How about a sniper? Sniper on the hills! And we're gonna put some foot soldiers up here. These guys are like the veritable Indiana Jones is raiding the temples here. Keeping these guys distracted so that our main anti-armor bazooka soldiers and special forces operators backed by snipers are gonna be able to do the dang thing. Look at that. Immediately after starting, you just see tons and tons of tracer fire here in Totally Aggro Battle Simulator because Gentlemen, we must survive 100 days. So all we need is some Kevlar vests that can't protect us from lightning. My God. But that's all right. We've got artillery. And oh, the battle for the temple is just absolutely nuts. The sniper, buddy, you're supposed to fire from distance, not charge a minotaur. It's not like your sniper rifle has a bayonet or anything. This man needs to work on his tactics. Maybe he should subscribe to Baron Von Tactics, where Sun Tzu says, I don't need to write The Art of War. I can just watch Baron videos. That's what he totally said, guys. Wait, they said I was getting ready for D-Day. Oh, Viking D-Day on a frozen lake, meaning they can't even sail the ships. They've got to carry them. No problem. I have a solution. Hawatches. The idea here is, oh my god, the Hawatches didn't even get a fire. Guys, I think we've broken the game. It's like... 
Minecraft 100 days on hardcore, but like you're modded not to die or something. I think we've clearly established that using this modern faction, we can break the game now. Shall we go back to a challenge where we can only use one modern soldier with our units? We'll do one of each type and we'll see if they can do it. To make these battles a little bit more balanced. Marksman, do it. Oh wait, you're the Spec Ops guy. Yeah, you got the radio pack, the headset, and the M14 battle rifle. Oh! Oh, buddy. Uh, you're not too special if you jump into a hole and die. All right, that's, that's not how we do special things around here. Who's gonna win in this shootout? A 50 caliber machine gun or a watcha that spittoons this man in the head? Luckily, we still have plenty of soldiers left. Oh, bazooka guy. <laughs> he just committed uh, treason right there. Yeah, that if you had survived, that would have been a court-martial. He fired the bazooka, killed this guy, and then proceeded to commit seppuku. Oh, God. Oh, my God. This day little impossible VIP. Impossible, they say. I know just what to do. Firing lines. Anti-armor bazookas on the sides. And I'm talking. 10 bazookas. 50 caliber machine guns on the further flank. They are flanking the flank. Spec Ops, because they look cool. And you guessed it, snipers. A whole lot of snipers. Who wins this battle? This is kind of scary, actually. They have so many high-powered units out there. Bosses from multiple factions, secret units. But it doesn't matter. Because this idiot brought a tree to a gunfight. We're back to one of the military units. Chica poo da 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 time. And then, if we have extra money, we're just gonna use hobbits. Actually, no. The challenge continues. Oh god, they've got Valkyries. Shoot those things down! Oh man, this is gonna be so bad for the bazooka. Uh, ugh, you did it! You done did it, you idiot! He just killed everybody. Oh god. Luckily, this guy is an absolute beast. I thought we were gonna lose. We need to reevaluate where we place the bazooka because if we're gonna lose this, it's because we're dumb. Oh my God. Okay, I think what we have to do is put a machine gun over here and a bazooka over here. This is kind of scary. I don't think our seven units are gonna be able to defeat this because look at this. We've got a bridge full of enemies. Oh, <gasps> four? Oh yeah, that's, that's a little bit ridiculous. Redonkulous. We're gonna have to use our fodder unit, the operators here. And we're gonna need a lot of them. Because Monkey Kings ain't no joke. Now we need some artillery. I'm thinking the ancient faction ballistas. That should be enough. Now the ballistas are designed to do massive damage to high priority targets, <clears throat> like all of these guys. So how's the rest of the war going? I mean, if you, what? The bazooka just, sh what are you doing, fella? Why did you shoot our artillery pieces? Wow, they, they gave me way too much money. However, the Monkey Kings have just entered the fray and two of them just jumped in the water. And you know what? I guess it's fair though. Mr. Bazooka, he fired his bazooka as he was dying. You know, good job. You you did it. You, you did the thing. It's just the thing was you being an absolute idiot. Wait a minute. Is this deja vu? Do I have to do the same thing with less money? Challenge accepted. We'll put a support there. Anti-armor over here. Flanked by two operators in each case. Concavity, boys. We're gonna get a wizard with a main battle tank. This is the new artillery pieces. And we'll also have some pikes. All right, so M1 Abrams tanks are a perfect complement to a modern faction. The issue is the terrain on this map is quite chaotic. And the tank drivers, well, they didn't even get their learner's permit and they were you know like hey why don't you drive this what are your qualifications They're like oh i just played a lot of like uh tanks and video games and like you're hired this is how you totally accurately run an army oh my god it's just chaos wait a minute what's in this cave shields catapult oh gosh artemis samurai giant and cheerleading zeus and they gave me only twenty thousand dollars seriously dudes that's not nice what we need to do is take command of the bazooka guy. So as long as I don't friendly fire and just lob shots down that tunnel, we should win. Zeus is down. Look, I didn't even friendly fire. All right, boys, defend these tunnels. I'm just going to sit here and watch. Otherwise, we lose. <laughs> this is awesome. 
Clearing tunnels is easy, boys. Get in there and do that thing. Okay, shotgun's going first. I love that. I can't tell what's happening. Except victory. Oh my gosh. Day 63. We want a few extra operators. And I'm thinking we're going to need a little bit more, especially against this formation. We're going Hawachas on the flanks. And you know what? I'm putting a watch up here. Fire! Yes! I did it! Oh! <gasps> Oh my gosh, I think I just won the battle right there. Watch his fire. Kill the giants, kill the cheerleaders. Oh yeah. Wait, what's back here? <gasps> an Artemis? They have an Artemis creeping around over here? <laughs> Watch is firing. Oh yes, that's the way to do it. Wait, what is still alive? Oh my gosh. These levels, they pack in all these little secret units hiding all over the place. But victory has come for the good guys. All right, we've got a samurai giant, which can repel lots of firepower. Oh, they got a monkey king over here. What else are they hiding? Troops coming out of the temple, anything up here? Of, oh my, of course, of course there's units up there. Anti-armor, you're gonna be off by yourself. You're in timeout. I'm thinking an army of archers. Oh my gosh, I can have so many, I'm gonna make the game lag. We're bringing in more firepower in the form of muskets. I have so many units, but so does the enemy. All right, uh, our frames are down to very low. The issue here, I think, is the Monkey King versus all of our archers. Because he's going to clone himself, and that's going to prove a bit of an issue. But as long as we take these giants out before they close with our lines, I think we should be fine. Oh, no, here's the bazooka. He's aiming at a dude's head. This, this cannot go well. <gasps> that actually worked out. Okay. Wait a minute, the samurai giants are falling from Mount Olympus. Are they dying? <gasps> They're falling in the water. This could not have gone better. Uh, this one looks like he'll survive though. And that one will as well. I think we're winning. Bazooka guy hasn't killed too many of his friends. And he just regicided that king. Over here, we're losing our left flank. A Jarl or a couple of them just came out of nowhere. And by a couple, I mean, oh my God, that's a lot of Jarls. I love how, like, we've got Renaissance-era, like, conquistador-looking musketeers, and then Vietnam. I ain't no rich man, son. And it's like, there we go. This is our army. This is perfectly normal. This is how a totally accurate war goes. Oh, this brave, brave man. For king and country. Actually, that's French. He would be Spanish-looking. Oh, you did. They'd be like, for the Lady Mary. That's also French accent. I, I, I've got to work on it. The only thing I know how to say in Spanish is Pedri, Pedri, Pedri from that one soccer game I saw in Barcelona. Oh my god. Alright, this is worrisome. We need to have all of our heroes and we need a heavy rate of fire. We're bringing muskets back. I gotta say, wouldn't it suck to be the dudes on the front lines like, oh yeah, we got sent here. Where's our backup? Well, they're not for like 60 yards away, so that's gonna be problematic for your chances of survival anyway. Uh oh, 50 calibers laying down to start dishing out the pain train. Oh, he's getting poisoned. Wait a minute, they're using poison gas? That's definitely against the Geneva Convention. But I think also using Yogi Giants is also sort of illegal. Look at this guy. He's just like doing his, uh, well, it's not downward dog and it's not Cobra. That's break your back pose. All right, snipers only. Oh man, that reminds me of like the old days of Call of Duty. Like, Call of Duty 1 on PC was the best. All right, are we killing the dragon? We are. There's a few Chuko news in the back, and they're luring us into a trap. Tango down. What? Did that guy just fall from the roof? That's some seriously tricky ambushes. Guys, this is not how you do it. Are you? Wait. What is going on right now? I don't even know what just happened. Okay, we've got the specialist units. And, oh, there, they do have Chuko News. Oh my gosh, look at that, dodging, whoa. This guy's so, oh, he's definitely dead. This guy took one to the left eyeball and the nuts! Oh no, but he was our only casualty. It's day 79, I can almost taste victory, and victory tastes sweet. But I'm thinking we're learning that, my god, these snipers, okay, yep, they break the game. Let's go back to the original challenge. One of each of the specialists. I like to put the valuable guys on the opposite side of the bazooka. And I really love Viking Berserkers. They're just so good at distracting the enemy. They literally jump behind their lines and just start messing things up. Wow, they jumped over the bullets. 
That is awesome. It's almost like we planned that. Oh, the bazooka didn't kill his friends and he made it to the front. So friendly fire. Whoa! This man's got a small head and he's got a gas mask. This is hilarious. It looks like it's a mech being driven by a little man. But nope, he just he just went to one of those pygmy villages like out in the middle of the Pacific Ocean and uh, got his head shrunk. Okay. Uh, I, I gambled, guys. Just... Yes! <laughs> we hit the Chuko New first and now it's just a bunch of cheerleaders. One sniper is all we needed to beat that. The question of one shot, one kill, well, who sh shoots first? We, we, we do. We shoot it. We... Sh we, we shot the gun first. <laughs> That's incredible. <gasps> oh no. Valkyries? Hmm. We still have $11,000 left. What's the best unit to defeat Valkyries? We're going to recruit Viking mercenaries. We're going to be all on the ground. I think that's enough. I mean, we have so many soldiers. We've got berserkers to jump through the air to try to catch them. And we got lots of bullets. Oh, man, we got a lot of bullets. Oh, yeah, we got this one. Oh, bazooka. A little bit of friendly fire never hurt nobody. It, it actually does. It hurts so many people. Okay, a mass Viking invasion. I just want to see what this would look like. All 50 caliber machine guns versus a massive invasion of Viking warriors. Oh no, they got berserkers. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh no. I, I can't even tell what's happening anymore. I thought we were going to lose, so like my heart just sank. But it seems that we have enough bullets. <laughs> okay. I don't even think we lost too many, surprisingly. Okay, a lot of healers. Hmm, I can afford two snipers. All right, we blew up the ship and the ship's soldiers are way back here. They're trying to heal him, but he'll eventually walk to the front and be the target of opportunity for the sniper if they stop this weird holy mosh pit. <laughs> and then there's this guy like, hey guys, how are you doing? Okay, well, this didn't turn out exactly like I thought it would. And the last one go. <laughs> Dude, come on, man. He goes. There we go. Dead. Okay. This has to be tried out. Bazookas, blow everybody up. <laughs> oh. Oh, you're trying to hide some knights, I see. There's probably another one. Yep, over there. Got it. Oh, they got a lot of guys hiding in the woods. This is an ambush. How are we even supposed to get these guys? Wait, is that a dude in there? There we go. Artillery is getting blocked by the trees. This is Vietnam right here, man. Look at this, man. This is... Look at it. Look at it. Come on, boys, shoot. Really? You're missing from point blank range? Uh-oh. He's shooting back. All right, we're gonna grab a guy and we're gonna, oh, well, we're gonna win. Oh, look at this. They've got every projectile unit in the game, I think. Is there a musketeer? No, they've got, well, they left one out. That's weird. They left a couple out. I see your range units and I raise you mine. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, sniper rifles shoot far. It's 92. I can taste victory. Oh god, there's a lot of guys out there. Uh oh. Oh, this guy's fighting with a spear in his femur. Look at that fire rate, boys. Uh. Oh my. Okay. That's interesting. Now, I want to test the sniper, but oh man. Yeah, we're going to need a little more than just the sniper. We're going to do sniper and spec ops. And I really think these two units can win this whole battle because eventually the sniper's gonna have to reload and that's when spec ops guy comes in spec ops guy is racking up all the kills this is like when you have two player co-op and you're shooting and one guy's just like getting all the points you're like man did he just shoot the air did you see that uh oh guys get the get the archer oh wow he almost hit the sniper but the sniper dodged out of the way well, I mean, if you're going to line up in a giant conga line of death, we're going to take you out. Oh, they didn't have any healers. <laughs> so this should be funny. Who gets the kills? Artillery strike? Yep, artillery strike. 95 hard boss. Okay, we are prepared. We're going to go to the dynasty and bring out Hawatches. We're going to recruit mercenary samurai. 
to fight for us so that our heroes can hide back. I mean, him can come in at the end of the battle and finish it off. Is that enough to beat this? Oh my God. These are all shoguns. That, the shoguns are gonna be able to block all of our projectiles, right? Uh, it's really hard to tell what's going on anymore. Oh my gosh. But the shoguns, some of the shoguns are falling in the water. Some of them are just killing us. Artillery's doing it though. We have spec ops and the heavy gunner over here. Buddy, you need to get up and fight. Stop doing that. Don't worry about the giant. He can't keep blocking bullets. Tom Cruise was the last samurai, not this guy. Yeah. All right, now the giant goes swimming. I have to get uh, um, on his level. Yes. Wow. That one was close. I thought they were regular samurai. They were shoguns who were very good at blocking stuff. Oh, okay. A lot of guys on these cliffs, right? So a few spec ops. Where did this elephant come from? Wooly, point man, grunt, operator, anti-armor. So the idea here is hopefully they call in artillery strikes up there. Oh, that's brilliant. They did. Oh, I'm so thankful that you guys followed the tactics. Now these guys are just falling. I don't know if that one was very well thought out. Wait a minute, who's left alive? They're calling an artillery on someone. Wait a minute, is someone stuck? Oh, it doesn't matter. Yes, calling an artillery was a brilliant idea. Thank you, me. You're welcome, you. Everyone's in a line. This is a line of snipers that are just, in most cases, <laughs> look at this. <laughs> He's firing through his buddy's like armpit. <laughs> oh, brilliant. 90. Eight. Our seven heroes versus a rather impressive army. Now, as long as he's not hiding stuff in the woods again. Wait, is that a guy in the woods? No, it's a chicken in a barrel. Of course. Uh-oh, incoming catapult heading straight for our shotgun boy. Oh. Oh, he took out the grunt. All right, there are snakes out there. Yes! 99. Oh, we got it flying things. We got our seven heroes. Now, we're going to need some mercenaries. We're gonna bring in the Spartans. Spartans, prepare for glory! Oh god, okay. Oh god, they got a Hawacha. I was not accounting for that. Are all of my Spartans dead? Was that a friendly bazooka that did that? Oh god, you better kill that Monkey King or we have some serious problems. As Leonidas fights to the death right here. Oh, where did the Monkey King go? Is he dead? I guess he's dead. Okay, the Monkey King is dead. Oh my gosh, we lost a fair amount of our heroes. Day 100. This one's called Omega. Omega. All right. Now, if I was a less mature man, I would say something like Omega these nuts. These aren't regular samurai. They're shoguns. Oh my god. Cheerleaders and Uluras? Okay, this is no joke. But I have a solution. Bombs. Oh god. My camera went all wobbly. Whoa. I feel like I just got a concussion. Oh, the bazookas are going off and look at that. Samurai Ulras flying in the sky. Is that guy alive? Ooh, not anymore. He just broke his neck. Their lines have collapsed. Day 100. We've done it. We've survived 100 days in tabs. Yes. If you guys do want to see more, well, pull the trigger on that like button and let me know. And I'll see you in the next one.